Let's go, Grinders! SpongeBob in the house. Let's go. Monday Gaming Grind House. How's everybody doing out there? Out there, out there. What? What? Ryan says he misses a song. What do you mean? This is the DJ DJ Grindhouse Jam. You mean this one? Uh oh, it's like oh, yeah. It's that kind of night. SpongeBob comes. You 
you mean that song? Oh yeah. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? It's Gaming Grindhouse Mondays, and hope everybody's doing well. What are we doing here? SpongeBob consoles. Oh my goodness. What have we? What has happened? <laughs> what has happened? What has happened? It's called they. They just really, really have piss poor uh management and they just they're it says they're tone deaf dude i have no That's clue what's up, frogs yeah tone deaf. To, to, i don't know i have no clue what is going on in these streets but it is crazy congratulations wanna wanna running that thing yo shout out to ron m with the vip grinders giving the five memberships out thank you so much man and yes i got a, a big announcement that we're going to talk about in a little bit uh regarding the uh the memberships to the gaming grindhouse but yeah, let me do some of these shout outs coming on in here. We did the VIP grinders coming on in. Shout out to them being a member. Thank you, Ron M. And then we've got Robert Lawrence, Con Consumptive Soul, Brian East, Neil. What's up? N Gamer NXR. What's up? Wild Wolf in here, man. Yeah, Joe. What's up? For Brizzle in here. Here's the For Brizzle. LM is here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was a little late. Sorry. I've been doing a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. As you can tell, I have a lot of stuff with the channel. I was trying to get everything all set up there. What's up, Mary Wilcox? How you doing, Bill? What's up? If you're new here, everybody hit that like button. Taran, what's up? How you doing? How you doing there? Leech, what's up? You missed the Game Pass song? I got you the Game Pass song, Ryan. I got you. Dog Zone, what's up? Westcon, how you doing, man? We up in here. Maddie B says, what's up? Cosmic Hero 270 with the five. He goes, Jez, are you ready, kids, for useless, expensive console? What a joke, dude. It is like, it's it, it does all that message. Thank you so much for the super chat. Dude, it's like it's like sending messages to the left side and the right side. It makes no sense. It's like a most expensive console for a kitty. It makes no sense. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Oh my god. Yes, Ryan Lawrence with five gifted gaming grindhouse VIPs. Well, without before we just get into the topics and we get into frogs and stuff. Well, thank you, every guy. Thank you again for the VIPs. There is a new tier in the gaming grindhouse. But first, before we get to the new tier, we're talking about the VIPs. Let me let, let me say a new screen, a new a new uh thing that I wanted to show for the VIPs. Here we go. We've have now platinum grinders and golden grinders. So these platinum grinders have been here for over two years, which I forgot to upload the other video that has the two year on there, but I will upload that one for the next time. And the golden grinders are here for over a year. So, dude, I want to thank everybody. That I am just amazed. The, v the VIPs have grown this long, man. But the shout out to the Platinums and to the Goldens. And we have some people that are right on the cusp of being the Golden Grinders. So we're going to put you in the Golden Grinders. You'll be there by the next show on there. And then, yes, so we got our Platinum Grinders and Golden Grinders shout outs we're going to do. And these are them. Yeah, shout out to the Platinums. I will read them off. Tex Max Morty, Four Star General, Solari Brothers, Fazbender, Cyber Dragon, and the Tools. Tool Man. Shout out to you, man. These are two members over two years in the gaming grindhouse. And then our golden grinders, J Summers, Maniolas, True Witty, Three Mile Island, C Fresh, Kevin Green, Twisted Sink, Anthony Dixon, Will, Geo Nose Gaming. Oh, yeah, I gotta make sure I make this bigger. My, my grinders' eyes are going there. Stonewall, and Nelson's Gaming Culture for Brizzle, Ron M, The Claymores, Alfonso Carter, RPG88, Danelle Brown, Ice Queen Gaming, and B Carter is legit. Shout out to the golden grinders over there baby and we got it we got about i have about another five or six more people that are going to be added to the golden grinders list in another month so definitely shout out to everybody there and shout out to all the vips but one thing i did want to just mention and you can see it in the messaging there is a new ultimate grinder tier all right so uh, i was waiting to find out like trying to figure out great ideas to do for a next level grinder the ultimate grinder and the ultimate grinder just to let you know and those of you who have the VIPs can upgrade to the Ultimate Grinder. But what that's going to do is we're going to, you're going to help me. We're going to make the songs for the channel. And you're going to get access to unreleased Grindhouse music. So those songs that you heard, uh, you know, for example, th these ones, we're going to become, I have ton, we're going to come up with some new ones. But um, the, the Phil Spencer. Oh, yeah. Songs like this. to these songs that I well, we just created. I, but Be The Phil Spencer, this one's that I like to be the Oh, 
there's an alarm on there. I'm sorry, dude. That's <laughs> there's a siren on there. I'm sorry. I'll fix that. The oh man, that thing had a siren on it. So anyway, could you not hear me through over there? But yes, you're getting the game pass. So for the ultimate tier, just sorry about the sirens. Sorry about the air raid sirens. <laughs> That stupid video had the air raid sirens. All right, I'll mute that the next time. But anyway, without the air raid sirens on there, I will make sure that those things are muted next time I do that that uh that thing. Jesus, <laughs> those air raid sirens. You can tell I'm trying to get all this stuff here. But anyway, there's the ultimate grinded tier. You'll get access to um to unreleased songs, and then as an ultimate grinder, you'll be part of a poll to vote on what the next release will be so there will be a playlist of unreleased songs for the ultimate grinder there will be a, a, a you know a bunch of them and, and then even you'll get access i'm going to have a discord channel where the ultimate grinders will be in there and you'll give ideas we'll come up with with ideas for the songs and then i will do i'll make the songs it takes some time to do them but i will get some unreleased out there you can listen to them and then we'll have a vote for the the ultimate grinders and you will decide which ones the gaming grind house will listen to uh for that so that's what the ultimate tier does um you'll get exclusive voting on there and you'll get also to hear the whole playlist of all the gaming grind houses um greatest hits the ga gaming grind house records per se so that is the ultimate grinder tier descriptions are in that there but you get the discord you get the ultimate the unreleased songs and then you get to vote on what the songs will be released for the VIPs and the gaming grindhouse world and all the grinders on there. So that is the ultimate tier. And then hopefully I fixed that siren thing, but I wanted to do a shout out to my platinum and golden grinders and the VIP. So, you know, it's, it's happening. It's happening. And uh, dude, there's so much coming. I'm so happy to, 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 to do these things. It's it definitely, everybody likes the songs. I've been putting them out there and definitely want to give, uh, you know, Give that as a special thing for the ultimate grinders on there. So everybody, shout out to everybody coming on in. Hit that like button. And uh, we're going to get to these topics here. Uh, sorry for that siren there. Uh, I'll change that. But we'll get to the topics here. So topics tonight, we're going to do Hell Divers and Hell Halo comparisons. That one was uh, that was a humdinger. I saw some people getting triggered over that thing. Final Fantasy VII, incredible. And everybody wants it. Uh, only about three hours in, two, yeah, about two, three hours into Final Fantasy. So I'm not going to talk too much about it. I don't want to talk spoilers or anything like that. Just like the reception of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And then Xbox games running better on PlayStation. Who would have thought that, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Nintendo holding it down in court. That's right. Nintendo's holding it down in court. What do they do? They, 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 uh, taking it to emulators there. And then the, uh, Booster's big brother. Big Booster, the Series X coming in at $700 with SpongeBob's face planted on it. Uh, um, um, uh, speechless. And then exclusives are justified for more developers and the flip floppers out there, like our good friend, uh, Mr. Cookie Monster. Well, he used to do cookies. Now he don't do cookies anymore. Destin, a good friend. Oh, no. We suck again. But anyway, yeah, that's about it. Let me get some. I got, I got another super chat in here. Shout out Twisted Sig with the two. He goes, yo, Jez, pray for Xbox. <laughs> you Wait, thank you, Twisted Sig, for that super chat. You got to put that in parentheses and say, quote, pray for Xbox Digital Foundry. <laughs> that's who said it. <laughs> oh, man. Freaking Digital Foundry saying pray for Xbox. They're just shaking their heads. Digital Foundry is just like, Dude, what did we get ourselves into with this stupid Xbox, man? They like it. It, it, it it's crazy because it, it it's <laughs> you know if you ever seen a product that under delivers so much, over promised and under delivered so much that it's a real product out there. It's the Series X, like it is the most like dumbfounded item that just was billed at this most powerful machine to eat monsters for breakfast and bitches for lunch. And it comes out, and and, and, and the, the power, the, the architecture, the DNA, Phil's DNA, and the chips, and all this stuff, Halo's on the chart, all this stuff, and this thing is horrible. It don't run games well. It's just, just dumb. Like, it just does not work. The controller... 
the control is old, the dashboard's old, that the console doesn't do anything well at all. They don't even hype up quick resume anymore because there's nothing to resume. But it was the most oversold and underperforming box. Like, you got scammed, dude. That is like some New York City Canal Street shit like going on right there. Trust me, this is a Louis Vuitton bag. It got the, the L and the V all mixed up upside down. It's all bootleg. Like, I, it's the biggest bootleg product I've ever seen for a consumer electronic product. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen how, how, how underwhelming the most powerful console in the world has been. It doesn't even run games. It, it doesn't even run games well. Like, it, they had their own games. Oh, my goodness. The share button. The, the, the share button get repurposed, Ryan. You can repurpose the share button. True Virgil, he, re, he repurposed it to order pizzas. You go to Domino's from the Domino's app. You could do, repurpose the share button. It's like six months into the Xbox console launch. They, they basically said, guys, the share button, you could, you could turn it into something else. It orders Domino's from the app. Ridiculous. But my goodness, what a fail. So we'll talk about that fail of that thing. But we're going to run down these other ones. So Frog, did you see this whole Helldivers 2 and Halo comparison thing? Oh my gosh. Uh, I basically didn't see that. What I basically saw was just the stuff they were... There was coming to hell divers like the tanks and the mechs and all that stuff and people were freaking out that's what i did see that was the important stuff the comparisons and all that i didn't see i'm gonna be honest with you when it comes to to oh man how, i'm trying to say it in the nicest way when it comes to, to people comparing games that are kind of on x but they're on xbox or on playstation I, I just don't think there's any comparison. It's really hard. Even even a game like Helldivers being a double A game, how do you how do you really compare something like that to a franchise that used to be considered one of the greatest franchises? Uh, you know, I just don't. It's sad. We live in it. We're living in sad gaming times. That's sad that Helldivers can be compared to Halo. Uh, I get the no, comparisons. No, no, like not, I'll read the thing to you because it's not what you think. Yeah. It is. So I'll read it. Okay. But first, Frog, the thing is, is something something incredible just happened in the gaming grindhouse uh, chat right now. And, and this is, I got to say, you know, there's something about Maniolus. He has, uh -oh. like, I think he's, he's scoring a perfect score here. But he has managed to gift five more VIP grinders. And the first one that gets it, true Virgil, back again. Dude can't leave. My goodness. He's back again, ladies and gentlemen. Goggle my balls. He's back. He's back. Goggle my oh. balls in your jaw. This is the remix. Maniel seems to always get. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Maniel's got his number. He got his number, Frog. Incredible. 100%. Hmm. He, is, he, is, he is perfection. He's perfection. Maniel, five times. Five. He's going to do the Booker T Spinner Rooney. He's like, five time world champion. <laughs> God, that man, true Virgil. Well, you know, it, I think he's coming around, though. I think I do think true Virgil is coming around. He he's definitely he's oh, no. out, man. There's, there's not much know, to hang it, on to anymore. It, you know, Jazz. At this point, <laughs> I don't see how anybody that games uh, primarily on Xbox can really have anything negative to say about Nintendo or or PlayStation. Yeah, I, I don't see how you it's do. It's incredible, dude. It's incredible. It's incredible that. But you know, just stick around. But here's the the article that we're talking about. Manny do Manny also doing the God's work. <laughs> oh no, John Wayne, John Wayne, no, not like this, not like this. What is he? Oh, no. 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 Hey, don't get me oh. wrong. What? There's some stuff I don't like on PlayStation, but uh oh, 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 pause, oh no, what are we doing here? Massive, oh. another man's been swallowed. Oh, okay, Jesus. So, Frog. So, this is the article. Games Radar stirred the pot, and they wrote an article going, "Hell Divers 2 recaptures the co-op chaos of classic Halo games better than Halo itself." Yes, it does. In opinion, after I, 30 I agree with that. hours, the co-op chaos of Helldivers 2 reminds me of Halo's long-gone glory days. 
Man, oh man. So this stirred a pot, and a lot of the Halo, we, I mentioned this on the show, that they also were trying to incorporate ODST, and like, oh, this is like what an ODST team would be, ODST game, with the with the drop pods and all this other stuff going down, and, mm-hmm. um, and you know, basically, um, they're trying to put that in Forge mode, the kind of gaming mode that Helldivers is, it's been such a hit, and uh, on top of that, um, it has managed to leapfrog itself each week and now it's even higher mm-hmm. this week that than the previous week which chris dring wrote he goes I, this is um, like unprecedented that the set that the fact that it's not having that fall off effect that we've seen so much where they get that peak everybody goes crazy everybody announces their numbers and right after those numbers are announced it's like a ski slope straight it down. drops off right and it never hits that peak again no it hits that peak again I, it, it, but you you know why I think it, it doesn't because um, it's a game that's a, that's a service based game that a uh, it came out and it, it was kind of rough but it came out and and it did pretty well for itself but it came out um, you know um, at a time where it was like a middle ground and then also you know as a game that serves and this is what I keep telling people a game as a service like Hell Divers it released on PC and console that's okay it did well you're not going to release uncharted 5 on pc and console it's not going to do pc is not going to do numbers like this because it's not that type of game so when people say everything needs to come day and date we don't need to do what xbox is doing and everything come day and date. you got to stop being stupid and saying that it, you got to they're they're judging what they can bring to pc day and date and as soon as a game and this would this would it kind of irritates me. As soon as a game like Helldivers is successful, and it's really successful on PC, you're all these PC guys who used to be Xbox guys saying, oh, Dan, that is coming. You just don't see it. It. Mm. I, I don't think that you'll get a God of War or the big Spider-Man. Or the, those games don't make money on PC. We, we, we've seen that. We have the proof, and it's in the pudding. None of these games that were on PC that are the single-player story-based driven games are making big numbers like they did on the console. But something that has a, a consistent multiplayer game as a service, and it just happened to be Helldivers, it just took a game like this that was a service-based game to make money. You get another service-based game that hits off, and it's a PlayStation and PC, it's going to make money. But God of War, Spider-Man, and Charlie, games you know they're not gonna make the money on pc like they're making on console yeah, yeah. it's it's a, I think, you, you know, can't think just because one game is a service is doing this well on pc everything needs to come day and day like like microsoft it, it just wouldn't work it mm-hmm. just wouldn't be financially feasible well, I, uh as far as like sales numbers it just wouldn't work i don't know why people think that hey well health divers does it every game can do it it just well, doesn't work. No, it just shows the like the thing you said about it coming out at the right time and just doing mm-hmm. what and and not having a lot of the tropes that I feel a service game has. But yo, let me just say, holy crap! After many olds get the five, Steven Leone gave a ten <laughs> VIP grinders. Steven Leone, thank you so much, man. He just gave it to a whole bunch of grinders waiting. And oh my goodness, who Sam got it? Yo, Gino DeMarco, G Jr. Holy crap. Yo, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it, Steven. Thank you again. And thank you to, to Robin and Steven of Ron M and Manny Olds and Steven and uh you know for the for all the, the members there. And Cosmic Hero 270 with the five, he goes, Jez, Halo sucks so badly that Helldivers stole the popularity, fun, and warthog from Halo. And you're mm-hmm. right, Cosmic Hero, like that was the thing. It was the the warthog. That came yeah. in that actually was the yeah, thing that kind of said, customer. oh, no, they're going to put that in there. And that's where I think a lot of the the kind of uh, relations to Halo that people were saying in the co-op aspect of it, the fun that you have in the co-op yep. a- aspect of yep. it. And then when you look at what Piscatella is saying here, Helldivers 2 U.S. sales went up again during its third week in the market. An honest to goodness yeah. inverse of a decay curve so far. He says he feels like Stephen Irwin sighting a rare bird or something. Rare and amazing. Like, this is just, you know, I, I again, this is what happens when you make a great game and you get out of the tropes of it being a service. We were trashing on service games when we heard Sony was mm-hmm. getting rid of them and, oh, we don't want service games and all this other stuff. But the fact is, is that the service is not what's making this game great. It's the gameplay. Right. It's the fact that 
You don't need to grind in monotonous, boring things just to get something that you want. It just happens to be there. And I'm telling you, the thing that I love so much, and I cannot pull myself away from this game. Every time I sit down, I'm like flipping a coin between Final Fantasy, a uh, three-face coin, Final Fantasy, Green, uh, Green, Green Blue, which I'm on the final... Uh, Gren Blue, I'm on the final boss, final phase of, of that person, which that is a whole bunch of characters I still have to unlock. But right. I almost finished the story. Then Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which I'm about three hours into that, but I cannot get enough hell dives. Over 30 hours in that freaking game. I want to play it all the time. I'm playing it on the portal. I'm playing it on, you know, when I'm in front of my, my PlayStation. I want to play it all the time. And it's just that, I, and when I saw those those things get dropped, like apparently they're dropping these kind of these weapons and just if you find them and stuff like that i'm like i'm like hunting seeing if these things are around there because they have this the developers mm -hmm. that are dropping you know stratagems and things like that as well which it that's what you do with a service game you you make it a living world that when you go in there you don't know what's going to happen what planets are getting taken over you open that game up in hell divers too you you don't it says the planet has been taken back and then a lot of the missions are like hold down defense missions because they're coming attacking you it's not you exploring them right then it becomes like a tower defense kind of game and you got to get your stratagems for that because of the situation where they're striking back and then you get different types of missions for different levels dude it is freaking incredible and every time you boot up the game it's the the planets are there there's new planets some are liberated some are open with new effects yeah, and then they're right. going to start adding this stuff to it with the mechs and things like that. This is what I said. Honest to goodness, inverse decay curve. Wouldn't it take a, the Sony's first service-based game to inverse the friggin' decay curve? After we've been talking about service games for almost a half a decade, this is the point that mm -hmm. I've been trying to make. It's like when you just make great games and you focus on the quality and the gameplay and what matters and get out of the whole, like, here's your battle pass. Just think... And again, I'm going to compare it to Halo in the sense of a battle pass. Look at Halo coming out. It was free. It wasn't a $40 item. It was free. Multiplayer. Right. And that game came out and they had, didn't have, the first thing was lack of content. They didn't have enough maps. The battle pass was, a, 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 even after they made you test the battle pass, the battle pass was, was, was the, the, all the leveling up was broken. You had to just grind to play. The, you could see the brokenness of the Halo Battle Pass in, in that service game. You could see you don't get leveled up for doing well in the game. Look at it takes a long time in Helldivers 2, but when you get out of that game, it shows you all the stuff. How many people did you save? How, how many uh, items did you, did you, re, you retrieve? How many, um, you know, how many area, side missions did you do? Did you save everybody? And you get rewarded XP for all that. And that's how you level up in the game. You don't go, it's like, play one game. No matter if you stand in the corner or kill a thousand people in the game, you get, um, you basically get the same XP because you just played a game. And everybody saw that. And in order, and then you had your dailies and your weeklies and all this waste of time. And people saw that and complained. And the, and the, 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 the lust for leveling up in that game was a, was a waste. And it was like, fix your game. And that's why we have these negative connotations to service games because people have done it wrong. Sea of Thieves, service game. That was the first time we've heard service games from Phil Spencer. And it was basically, it's a service game. It launched with three fetch quest missions, scored a 68 on Metacritic because of the lack of content. It had pretty water. Um, lack of crack, the lack of Kraken. Lack of the Kraken, dude. Five C dicks waving in the air. No, no body. That is a game. Microsoft service games are shipped with with patches in mind, we're going to fix it later. We'll add stuff later and just ship a complete game. And you know what? The battle pass is, is in the background. And and you look, and now I'm like actively looking to see if there's any cool armor. Log Hogs out of 32. I'm looking to see if there's any cool armor or anything like that. And the whole Halo comparison in the co-op is that emergent combat. And I think this does this better than Halo because I think this does this a little bit more akin to a, le a Left 4 Dead where this kind of, you know, there's some sort of the game manager is there. And yeah, it has pretty water, Maddie Beast. That was about it. That's pretty waves. There you go. That's about it um, with Sea of Thieves. But that was the compliments. But, and you can't wait to play it on PlayStation, right? 
But the whole point is, is that that emergent combat that you don't know what's going to happen. The procedural generated maps, it doesn't look procedural. It doesn't look like a, a, a star field where like you're landing on there and you just see the random kind of items from other planets just get populated, popping up. And you're like, oh, yeah, OK, so this is a procedurally generated map. Running around on those maps, they feel unique every single time. And that's what it's when, you know, just to put it simply, it's when the game, the gamey stuff, all that game stuff, all the tropes of gaming, like procedurally generated battle passes, when all those items are in the background and the game and the fun is in the foreground. That's, cre that's great game design. That is a great game. When all those gaming tropes are not up in your face and you see you see like the matrix code coming down. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, I see what they want me to do now in the next 10 months to get this level and to get this skin. I see what they want. All right, I got to keep doing this mission. I got to keep using the shotgun. And when you see those tropes, that's when you know that that was the priority of, of the thing. Like in Halo, they never tested out leveling up. They tested the battle pass in the beta. Like how they gave you all the money to just buy stuff in the battle pass for free in the beta because they wanted to test like the purchases and stuff like that. That's what they tested. Not new maps or anything like that. They tested the battle pass and buying stuff. But when you go hell divers, you don't even know what's a service game. You pay $40. You won't even know the battle passes and the acquisitions, whether they, you don't even know. It's not in your face. I love it. I love that aspect where you just boot up and you're in the game on a ship. You're not met with the battle pass screen. Even when they had The Last of Us and it showed that thing. Like, it, like I don't like these, these, these games that try to say we're a service game and they got that service game screen, Fortnite-esque. It's just really crazy. And you see the priorities. And I think that's the... And every developer should take a, a, a page out of what Helldivers did and look and go, guys, the point is, is that the service comes with the great gameplay and the experience that people have. Then you're taking people's time away. Now people want to be invested in that world. They want to see what's next. And, and then you saw teasing... The mechs, you saw teasing, you saw teasing stuff by just dropping it into the game and random missions and people get to look at it before you make it in the game. That is such a clever way of kind of giving people that way to, to drop and test things out. But that's the play. And yeah, well, look, I was thinking the same thing. He says, they said PlayStation has to make its own Call of Duty and they fucked around and got a triple double. Exactly. Dude, that was the thing. Like this, I was gonna title this is this Sony if this is PlayStation's Halo, but I think that's a little too much because Halo is not what it used to be. So it could be taken as a negative or it, so like I was gonna Halo in the in the glory days. But like this article about the hell about the Hell Divers 2, talking about how you know the glorious and hilarious multiplayer carnage of the four player co op that you had in Halo and just jumping in the Warthog, it wasn't even as dynamic as Hell Divers. But Helldivers has that. And the community, the people just jump in and play a game and they, they, they don't, people just know what to do. Like, it's so much, like, it's so great. Like, and it's so funny because people like Sony needs a multiplayer game. They don't have multiplayers. That's not their strength. And then look, look, look at what they drop. Even if Fair Games comes out face down, you, you always go back and they did Helldivers. Like, to get what held, and this is what people don't understand too, and this is such a, a lush thing of Helldivers here, but let me tell you something. What people don't understand is what Helldivers 2 is doing is very, very difficult, per even Matt Piscatella. What it's doing is, so they already achieved greatness with Helldivers 2. The rest now is, is accessory, the rest of the service stuff, because they have done what they needed to do. And remember when they said, like, hey, if just one of those games hits... It will be a success with these service games. Like if they're doing all these six service games and all of them are trash, okay, good. But if one hits, they got themselves something to kind of go back to, to add content to, to evolve. And Helldivers 2 is that. Breaking records in the sense of inverse curve. That means word of mouth. What did I, what did we say here, Frog? Word of mouth. Like you make a great game. Frog, you got to try out this game. Go play it. Cosmic Hero, you got to go play this game. Josh, go play this game. I was playing it. Toby, go try it out. Dog Zone, go try it out. 
Mary, go get, go try it. Mary tells somebody. Compost tells somebody. Josh tells somebody. Robert tells somebody. Stephen Leone tells somebody. Cosmic tells somebody. They go get it. And then we're all playing. And then know what else? I told you, it's a stream as paradise because of that emergent gameplay. Some of that elements are in CFDs when people hijack your ship and stuff, but that's not fun. Because if you're grinding to, 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 to get treasure, you don't want somebody griefing you. And the griefing in, in Sea of Thieves, while some of it was funny, it was not fun to the player. Where here, you get called an airstrike on you. It's like, oh. <laughs> it's not like end of the world, respawn, you're watching the rest of the game. But I, I think it's incredible of what it's doing. And, uh, and you know, I don't want to say it is the Halo but it's definitely Sony's multiplayer gold mine right now. And I think that they could just build on it. And I love that it's there. And and add that to Grand Blue Fantasy, Final Fantasy, Stella Blade coming out next. Like it, it's just insane. For for what we were told when I was eating my Thanksgiving turkey that Sony got nothing next year in 2024. Yo. We are in March right now, and I feel like it. I feel like it's the holidays. I feel like I, I should be putting my Christmas tree back up again. Frog, you, you believe this? Do you remember? It's we, crazy we because were turkey frog. What were they saying mm-hmm. about this year or at the Game Awards? What were they saying? Sony had nothing. They're like, oh, Sony got no games. Yeah, right. we know who we're told. They're told that Sony had no games. Sony had nothing. Meanwhile, they've been hitting it out of the park with, with everything. Final Fantasy reviews, Grand Blue on there, and then Helldivers 2 being a service game in this crowded market of service games. Well, you got Helldivers 2 doing what it's doing. And they're just getting started, Wild Wolf, right? Exactly. And then Rise of Ronin comes out with the multiplayer. I'm interested in that multiplayer with that. We'll see what that is. But, man... I told you that 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 I can't stop talking about Hell Divers 2. I spent a whole half hour talking about it again, but I'm telling you, it's a great game. I love it. And Grinders, we're going to do another. I stream it again, and we're all going to play. And then on top of that, now I got to get WrestleMania tonight. So probably we, well, I'm going to have to. Yeah, my son game. already downloaded. Yeah, I got to download that now. Get that WrestleMania. But now uh, just going to the the um, next. And I don't want to compare too much Halo. I know that the developer even came out and was like, oh, don't compare this to Halo and all this other stuff. But again, it's more of just the the co-op campaign, the co-op feel. Like I know Halo has a full story and all this other stuff, but it's it. it I'm one, that's why I said it's not comparable to Halo. But the fact that they got a multiplayer game that has a lot of life to it and a lot of people are playing it and it's growing each week. Hey, man, they are onto something. But I'm not going to say it's, it's their Halo yet. And especially what Halo is right now, those words don't even hold true anymore. You say it's their Halo, people are like, oh, no, that, that's, a, that's an insult because Halo has fell off the, the radar because Microsoft has done that to their own big brand. But, uh, but Microsoft, this is how you do service games. All right? So take note because you've been talking up service games for five years and still haven't delivered on them. Uh, still promising patches and fixes. You even took single-player games and turned them into service games, putting patches on those things. Yes, it is cross-play with PC Dog Zone. And that too. It is there. And now, just moving on to the, the another greatness, Final Fantasy VII. And what's crazy is the fact that, and what Frog said earlier, how these two games came out with Final Fantasy and Helldivers 2 right at the time where Microsoft is breaking bread and bringing their games just for right now to other platforms. It is like a perfect storm. Like you couldn't even ask to be kicked further down the road than what's going on now where Microsoft starts the year off with like, here are our games, Sony and PlayStation, Sony and Nintendo. And at the same time, Sony is dropping its own exclusive games and even having some on PC at the same time. And all they're doing is like, well, what about us? What about me? That's what they're saying. What about, we're giving you Sea of Thieves and Pentiment. What about me? And they're like, what about you? Well, what about me? We're giving you our games. Who cares? Thanks. You need us more than we need you. We don't need the Xbox. We don't need you. You need us. Because you abandoned that brand. 
Now you got to come crawling up Sony and Nintendo's ass and say, hopefully you, we sell our games now. But it couldn't come at a, perf- a better time because it is just the worst time for it to happen because Sony is able... It, it's not even like Sony is relying on these games. Sony is just dropping its own multiplayer Final Fantasy exclusive game, go buy a PlayStation, and they are bitter. They are bitter. And now where is Call of Duty? What is a Call of Duty? What what is it? I wouldn't be surprised if they start this starting to put in a game mode like Hell Divers right now on Call of Duty for the end of the year. You're gonna see those copycats. You're gonna see copycats trying to do what Hell Divers does. Mm-mm. I bet you they would they would they probably put it in there. But you couldn't ask for a better time. Everybody wants it. Everybody's like, well, Final Fantasy. We heard, we heard, we heard what's his name? We heard. Mr. Yellow Chair. Yeah. We heard him. It's not fair. It's just not right. What's not right about it, dude? Last year. Oh man. ABK deals. Lulu in my DMs. Where is she? Lulu in my DMs. Lulu's in the DMs talking about Jim Lion Ryan. What happened? Everybody's like, oh, if you said you had a problem with the ABK deal, you were a hater. You were a pony. What do you mean? This is great. Consolidation's great. Buy them all. Buy them all. Really? What happened? They had goddamn lawyers having uh, having spaces, sitting there with Florian, blowing smoke up their ass about how, oh, well, I heard in the courtrooms they don't have the legal documents to take this, the FTC and this, the CMA. Listen, I want to hear anything. Has anybody heard the, the initials FTC or CMA at all in 2024? Anybody? Anybody? Have we heard FTC CMA at all? Have we? I, I haven't heard anything. What happened? Did, did it go away? What happened to them? Yeah, exactly. I hear regret. About this ABK deal. Look at those. He was. Mr. Cookie Monster was trending on Twitter today. Here he goes. What does he have to say? And I, I'm actually not against exclusives. Period. Really? I'm not against Final Fantasy being released on the PlayStation 5. Exclusives are bad. Exclusives are not pro-consumer at all. Huh? If you're an Xbox gamer. Do you want to play Final Fantasy or not? And I, I'm actually not against exclusives, period. I'm not against Final Fantasy being released on the PlayStation quit his day 5. Job. Exclusives are bad. Exclusives are not pro-consumer at all. If you're an Xbox gamer, do you want to play Final Fantasy or not? Yeah, last year, everybody loved exclusives. They loved them. They loved exclusives last year. They're like, get that Call of Duty. Oh, all right. Well, it's just Call of Duty. We're going to keep Crash Bandicoot. We're going to keep. Oh, they're going to make prototype for us. Prototype just for you. Just for you. They're going to make prototype for you. Yeah, they're going to make prototype just for you. Oh, but you could keep Call of Duty. Exclusives are great. We get everything else, but you could have Call of Duty. Oh, but now, on the eve of Helldivers and Final Fantasy VII, now exclusives are bad. Guess what, Cookie Monster? I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you <laughs> we don't care. Jerry. It don't matter. You could you could flip flop like a friggin' pancake all you want and say how. Exclusives don't matter. Exclusives are anti-consumer. Exclusives this. You want to know what? That's your problem. That's a you problem, dude. 
You're the one that got to put your face out there and be the, put on the clown makeup and say these things to try to cope with the whole situation. You're the liar. When we had problems with this deal, oh, he had 30 goddamn videos all year last year talking about ABK deal. He might as well got his law degree the way he talked about this ABK deal. And now all of a sudden, exclusives don't matter. The company that you like, the trillion dollar beast incarnate, spent 70 billion, 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 billion dollars to keep things everywhere. And then on top of that said, oops, let's put our shit everywhere as well. We made you win. Who cares I am? Phil Spencer. And I am winning awards, bitch. Turn with third party. That's the flip of the flop of the... Uh, You're the, my number one customer. Goddamn uh, IHOP. Mm-mm-mm. What a joke. Where is that? Game night one, two, three with the five. He goes, they only care about the CMA and FTC and legal proceedings when Xbox is involved. Exactly. Dude, I have pictures of Phil Spencer wearing a suit. They're like, oh, he's so charming. He's so wonderful. Oh, no. We suck again. And then we have Twisted Sync with the two. He goes, um, Mr. Yellow Chair. And Dusty Bin made for each other trash. Stop. Enough. Hey, man. They're the ones that got to do this. They're the ones that got to go back and forth. I, I, we did a whole video on this last week about the back and forth, about the whole, the, the, the whole exclusives don't matter, exclusives this. And, and then that was when they didn't have exclusives. Then all of a sudden, when they started buying Activision, oh, then Starfield. Wait, what was that, Phil? What was, that? What was that Starfield? Yeah, he had to go. What did Phil have to say? He had to, he had to come out and be like, no, what did Phil have to say here? Phil had to come out and be like, you, you know... Um, if we're an Xbox customer, the thing I want you to know is this is about delivering great exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass You're exists. my number one customer. And that's our goal. That's why we're doing this. That's oh. the root of this partnership that we're building. Um, and the yeah, As soon as they started buying ZeniMax, that's when exclusive came back into the picture. It was like, oh, no, no. It's Starfield exclusive. Starfield's exclusive. You don't spend $7 billion and put Starfield everywhere. Starfield's exclusive, right? Starfield's exclusive. Yeah, then the exclusivity started happening. Then they bought Activision. And their exclusives were still talking. We haven't heard this exclusives are anti-consumer until this year when Sony drops Helldivers 2 and Final Fantasy 7. And now all of a sudden exclusives are bad. And so Microsoft is now giving Sea of Thieves, Pentiment, Goddamn high, uh, the bees and mosquitoes in the grounded and um and uh, and hi-fi rush and all of a sudden now it's like exclusives oh they're bad it has to end that's not the future anymore but for the last three years all about exclusives they're spending all that money you, right frog you know what it is jazz look there's so many people and i, and I i'm gonna say this and and it has to be understood most of the guys and like we we see who who are in the community to talk about their game on pc were xbox guys also we have to look at people who who are privy to getting things early when you're getting playstations early and you're getting yellow chairs that promote games and you're an influencer you can be bought off it's it's clear as day they are as, as much as it. as much as as much as, you know, I have some beefs with Colin Moriarty, I can respect him uh, and his podcast uh, that he does for, you know, um, Sacred Symbols because they don't take anything. They don't get codes. They buy it just like us. They consume it just like us. And the reason I can respect that and I can take more of what they say is because, and he has connections. Let's be clear. He has connections to get the stuff he could, but he doesn't do that because he wants to kind of stay as honest as he can to the, to the to the community and i can respect it now i don't i don't have a problem with people getting things you know and they say hey, i got a code i got this as long as they say hey 
somebody gave me this or somebody but people like you know um they mr danger zone he's a clown because <laughs> bec- he's a clown zone. because no, because you you say in one hand i'm not a fan of series never been a fan of the series on the other hand xbox needs this game you're a clown yeah i know that you're a clown me off, you he, are t- you are that pissed me off yeah, because you're a total he clown started with rebirth when Mr. i i said I, that where was let me tell you one? something jez i I've, I've been there since the beginning since the nes days i watch you know uh them not to be able to do the games they want to do on the nes and uh the super nes and they jumped over it because 64 was coming they jumped over to playstation playstation really it helped propel playstation and not only did final fantasy 7 help propel playstation you know they helped propel the game going forward six i mean i'm sorry seven eight nine from that point on, from seven going forward you can say it's been associated closely with PlayStation. It always has. When it's come to Xbox was the 360 generation with their 40 million sold. And people will say, hey, they, they sold 80. Microsoft themselves said, hey, we counted every Xbox 360 that was broken that we should reship to customers as a sell. They had a 50% failure rate. So they didn't sell 80 something million. They sold 40 something million. And they were just fluffing the numbers. Mm-hmm. Sony sold 80 something million. Let's be clear about that. So when Final Fantasy 13, 13, uh, two, uh, thir- clouds return, when these games came to Xbox, I was like, oh, this is cool. But guess where they still sold? When, when Xbox supposedly in the 360 gen was beating uh, uh, Sony's PlayStation 3, they still sold better on PlayStation. It's always been closely associated with PlayStation. It's not like Square hasn't tried to do exclusive games on Xbox. They just don't sell. Why right. would you? Frog, I got why would you? Here here's to show a, you something. Oh, hold on. Here's a, here's a jazz. Why would you, as a company, know? Hey, I got this game coming out. The first one, Seven Remake, didn't come anywhere but PlayStation Four and PS Five. Why would I say all of a sudden now? Let's put on the Xbox, and, I, and that Series S is a pain in my back that I got to develop for. Funk that system. Screw them and the horse they rode in. Here you go. We'll put it on PS5, and it eventually come to PC later. Guess what? They didn't drop day and date with PC, you know. Mm. And mm. and it's kind of like his whole thing was like, this is a this is a bad thing for PC. It's a bad thing for X because they people like him and like Phil Spencer and the rest of those guys. They're trying to get you to see Xbox and PC is the same thing. They're trying yeah. to push that now. Game Pass is a failure. It's a failure. Xbox from Xbox One until now, failure. This is not fanboy stuff. I hate when people can't speak facts and speak the truth and you get called a fanboy. Look, I primarily play on PlayStation, but I have an Xbox 360, I have an Xbox One, I have a Series X, I have a Switch, I own them all, and I play the great games where they may lay. It just so happens I predominantly am play on PlayStation and it dominates my house because that's where the games play the best at. When, when they make statements like best place to play games, stop lying. That is an opinion piece. It is a fact that you're getting out sold three to one. It is a fact that Final Fantasy games don't sell well in your system. And then my whole thing is, and, and rewind it back to Final Fantasy Rebirth, because I don't want to take too much uh, light from that. I even said to this guy, hey, Mr. Mr. Danger Zone, <laughs> if this game that came to Xbox, you complaining that it wasn't in Game Pass day one. You guys wouldn't buy it because they've conditioned you to look for stuff in Game Pass. So the fact that this came to Xbox, and let's say they give you seven remake and rebirth, uh-huh. and you're talking what's about... Up? Like, Yo, like, okay. stop being a... Okay. What's up? Stop being a clown because if, if, if Final Fantasy 7 remake and rebirth came to xbox you guys would complain that it wasn't in game pass and you wouldn't buy it so there's no reason when we know that sony is always closely associated themselves with final fantasy since final fantasy 7 it used to be nintendo but after final fantasy 7 going forward it's always been playstation it is, it's like does this guy play oh if he really plays games because he says stuff and you you gotta kind of look at him i'm like and, and you know it's not just a lot of guys who who jump on the the, the, the little chair for the fanboyism of Xbox, they I don't really think they play games beyond the three. I really don't think they play PS2, the yeah, Xbox, the GameCube. Yeah, your mic goes in and out, frog. Out yeah. Oh, it's it's going in. Hold it's on. Going in and out. Can you hear me better? Yo, can you hear me uh, better? Uh, try again. But go, but try go, but go ahead. Go. 
Yeah, nah, keep going man, in we're talking about Final Fantasy Seven. No, we're talking about. Like, no, we're just talking about Mr. They, they we're talking about Mr. Danger Zone. Mr. Danger, Mr. Yellow Chair, and and Dustin. Yeah, let me go into that. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Yellow, Mr. Yellow Chair so himself. Let me play this video here oh, that somebody got. Shout out to Odie. Um, oh my God! Eleven months you, ago. You, hey, here's another yeah, let, one. Go ahead. Go I'll ahead. Play this one. This helped him out a bit. Harvey Smith said originally read. Let's Ball watch his reaction when we find out. Microsoft went in there after spending seven billion dollars and said, "Stop making PlayStation versions of these games." Let's see how he how how fired up he gets. Um, he continued on, and he actually said this helped him out a bit. Harvey Smith said, Originally, Redfall was meant to release on all platforms. Smith said that the studio didn't mind that decision. However, he continued support from Game Pass and have to worry about one less platform, one less complexity. And Game Pass has a ton of people that can play. It could be our biggest game ever because of the 30 million Game Pass members or whatever that number is. So... They don't seem to particularly mind not needing to develop for the PlayStation 5. They're not worried about it. And my whole take on it is, yeah, Xbox bought Bethesda. So if they want to make those games exclusive, that's totally fine. And I, I'm actually not against exclusives, period. I'm not against Final Fantasy being released on the PlayStation 5. I'm not against uh, games exclu game ex games exclusively releasing on one platform. All right. The stuff I don't really like. <laughs> there it is again if you're if you're voting. 72% of people said the end of exclusive games is the right choice. Oh, it's evening out. Stop. Still looks Enough. like the yes, yes has it. Console exclusives aren't the future. They're just not. The no's are finally figuring out how to open the poll. <laughs> <laughs> anyway it's evening out at let's see yeah it's going back up 68 31 exclusives are bad exclusives are not pro consumer at all if you're an xbox gamer do you want to play final fantasy or not would it be better for xbox gamers if final fantasy 7 was also on xbox or final fantasy 16 spoilers the answer is yes Console exclusives aren't pro consumer. Um, he continued on, and he actually. What you watch, you little bro? Caught you in 20K HDR 1200 FPS Super Nintendo iOS 49 Blu ray Ultraviolet Radiation 1080p PlayStation 5. Here it comes! Oh my god! Oh my god! How? That is like. I don't hear clipped out of context. You said you have no problem. With Final Fantasy being exclusive, you're fine with exclusives. Then exclusives are anti-consumer. Listen. How do you do that? Jazz, it's a clown show, man. It Listen. is a clown show. There you show. go. Thank it you, Lane. Thank you, Lane. That's what it is. Whenever, whatever, no whatever the narrative. Jazz, listen. He's just going with whatever narrative Microsoft is currently pushing right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank he doesn't you. have his own opinion. Thank you. He doesn't have his own opinion. At all. At all. He was trending. He don't have his own opinion. Damn clown Dude, show. He don't, Dude. he don't even realize how often he contradicts himself. It, it's silly. At this point, it's comical. It's silly, yeah. Wait, I can't wait. <laughs> There's because, no way you can. Yo, you could have a whole channel based off of just his contradictions. Like, all that ABK stuff. And now, How, how now, do you? Yeah. Ridiculous. Now, exclusive, now exclusives are bad, right? But when Microsoft buys a whole publisher and pulls games off a PlayStation platform, that's fine. That's fine. But when Sony... Or when Square Enix approaches Sony with an opportunity to make an exclusive game, Sony didn't go over there and buy Square Enix. They paid for exclusivity to a game, which Microsoft could have negotiated and had that game. But they chose not to, according to Square Enix, with the Final Fantasy games. Yeah. So I don't understand the issue. And Where's then... Wait, like, they where's the play with Stalker 2? Stalker 2 and, and the medium? <laughs> was he shot? Yes. Where's the media? Oh, the wait, wait, was wait, 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 wait. What was that? Pie on life? Pie on life? That was yeah, what oh, happened about like, that? Like, come on, man. Hold on, hold on. 
Hold on, we can take we can take it back farther than that. We remember the Xbox One when Dead Rising Three came out, oh, and it's a third Rise. party publisher, Titanfall. and they only can we can take it to Titan. We can take it to Titanfall. Like he needs to stop being a fucking clown. That's why I don't like dude. dude he's a clown. War, he does series. this. He does this all the time. And I'm like, dude, you you you're mentioning you're talking. Because it's the hottest thing to talk about right now. Final Fantasy Rebirth, Seven Rebirth is the hottest thing to talk about. And you're on an Xbox show, PlayStation game. Talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. You have nothing to talk about, so you have to co create some some false drama and some clown buffoonery. Sh and anybody who stands and sits behind this guy, you're just a fucking clown with him in a circus. You are. And it just annoys me he that people still listen to this cocksucker. I can't understand it. How many times can he sit there and tell you, "Hey, I, I'm on. I feel Spencer's balls are in my mouth," oh, and you don't, you Jesus. just don't believe him. He tells you, oh he tells you, he tells you every time his mouth, there's balls down his throat, and you guys just don't believe him. Have you gone through a time of swallowing? Oh no! was overwhelming, and you, frog, frog, you see this? He it couldn't is, believe that he was man. trending. It's ridiculous. He, I, oh, I love it, Frog. I was, I was making, I was low. Yeah, <laughs> <one. laughs> he was like, screaming. Sorry. <laughs> he was screaming at thing. No, Frog. He, he, he was actually trending. Fuck that dude, man. He was trending over. He was, he was trending over Xbox part in the preview, and he's like, "You care more about my takes and how I'm not mad at Xbox than you do about an actual oh, Xbox God. event." Dude, it's. <laughs> What the? What a, what a what a what a moron, man! But the thing is, that guy's is a that moron. How do you go from like like what is your opinion? You could say it's your opinion, that's fine, and you could say you changed your mind. But like when you are just making a matter of fact and just going like exclusives are anti-consumer, like. But then, yeah, before when Microsoft was buying whole ass publishers, you were counting on your fingers what games they're gonna make exclusive. Like I don't understand. And the thing is, is that. Go hard at them because they are the influencers, the inside people, Mr. Yellow Chair and him. These are not your just Twitter feet people or just fans of, of the brand and stuff like that. These are, are supposedly the media, the educated media. Like he's on the podcast, IGN Access, whatever the hell it is, and talks this foolery. Like, how do you work in the gaming industry? That's your job, IGN, your job. And how do you speak with such ignorance? I, I don't understand it. Like, and the same thing is, Paris gets all this stuff shipped to him for free. He knows how to play the system. He's been talking about video games since Uncle Gamer. He's been involved meeting people at the gaming industry, doing this stuff. How do you, how do you put on these acts and be and expect to, for people to believe you and value your opinion when you're all over the place? You're all over the friggin' place. And whatever, it's whatever, whatever way Phil thoughts, that's the way they go. Phil thoughts to the east, they're with them in the east. He goes to the left, oh, he's over to the left. Exclusives matter. Phil said exclusives are anti consumer. All right, they're anti consumer now. Like, have a mind of your own, you know? And, th and that's the problem with, with these media folk is that they are just being either being told, influenced by, Microsoft, Microsoft has a hand in their pocket or what they're going to send them and what they're going to say, you know, hold the line, ride the, ride the line, say what we want you to say. Otherwise, we won't give you what the, you know, your little perks and stuff like that. I don't know. But whatever it is, it's making them look like fools. And I don't understand how it's you, literally how yeah, you do that. It's so obvious now. It literally went from exclusives are bad to. Oh, it's good. exclusives are great. Great when Microsoft buys all these publishers and makes these games exclusive. Now that's good. Now because Microsoft is putting their games on other platforms and they aren't getting these exclusive third-party games, now exclusives are bad again. It's like a flip. It's like flip flop, flip flop. It's like it's so. <laughs> and and Microsoft point, putting man, their games other way. I think that was the breaking point. But listen, when you hear the clowns like Paris and. Um, and, and jazz, these are just mouthpieces oh, yeah. for Microsoft propaganda. And Dustin right? Laguerre, they're, uh, they're, no. they're mouthpieces for Microsoft propaganda, right? They don't have their own opinions, they don't have a stance on any of this stuff. They they change with the wind, yeah, they do. They change with the wind. Let me get this super chat here. SNK Kev with a five, he goes, I'm not the type of person I'll step on your couch. Yeah, I stepped on your couch, <laughs> SNK says, and then Glinza with a five, he goes. 
Microsoft really hate the end of the the movie. Really hate the end of the movie seven. What's in the box? What's in the fucking box? <laughs> Glenda. What's in the Xbox? What is it? And you know, and the other thing too, I wanted to, to say too with, with um, you know, I was listening to this, and this is this is pretty wild. Like, I, and again, I there's nothing ill toyed or anything like that. I just want to play what. Let me see because I was listening to this and I was in I was kind of in shock. Where was single it? player games? It was what Jez said. I don't think Microsoft. Some of Mark- this when he said about. The ABK deal. Sony, Hold on. Uh, Sony, a little bit more transparent about. Let me see. The, the I don't know if this is it. I don't know if I had it. People affected. They think, haha, I've got a great tweet to to console war here about now. If that Xbox is wants to get out of console, but that's just complete bullshit. I don't know anyone who's peddling. The- no, it right? just continued. Right? He says the something where make- I think that ABK deal was wrong. And stuff like that. Meanwhile, he was like yelling at RFTC for a banjo about how this deal should go through. Where the hell was it? You know, I should have um, had it. And other games like the, there aren't PlayStation builds of these games in existence right now. But it is trivial to to do that. In a where's the ABK but deal? At thing? one point, there was an Age of Mythology spinoff being made for Xbox um, that they described. Let me see. New, new kids. You know, embracer group is them. The new. I think this area wasn't like it wasn't like a. So the regulators like oh, it's dogma. It only really will this have on the perception of Xbox? Will how will PlayStation react to this? Like, will, will the will the. So I suppose it remains to be seen, and I think Sea of Thieves and Grounded will tell a trilogy, and then now nah, it was something. He was saying when they were talking about, I think it was the Toys for Bob thing, and all the he was saying that everybody was doing has hopium that this deal was gonna save Blizzard and save all these IPs and prototype and and all these other things, and and he was like, yo, maybe this ABK deal wasn't, you know, a lot of it was hopium, and I'm like, you guys, you know, you you were yelling, Bootleg Jez was yelling at FTC Lena Khan calling her the the devil and. You don't know your legal system and all this other stuff. You got to make this ABK deal. He was disowning the CMA and all the because of the sake of this deal because he had he, he, he was disowning his own country. Yes, he was disowning his own country. And then him, the, I couldn't. I, I wish he, I had he, the part his own that country. I was listening to. I'm, I, yeah, I'm sure. What an idiot! Dumb. I can I wish when he was talking about the. I t- can see if you were at war. This man, th- yo, he was calling everybody under the bus. Like, what is wrong with you? Says the WoW fan. That's right, Josh. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can grab that you part. Know, I want because I was in shock when I heard it. Like, there, Rand's a great like, podcast. You know, I like Rand and all the other stuff. But man, when when like, Jez, when he was saying this stuff, I was like, he's not exactly the biggest service game in the universe. Is this the part? No. Well, latest it? press release. Ubisoft reported. He was saying this thing. Kind of. Kind of. And like the part that I didn't care for was that he was saying all the people that were celebrating this deal and hoping that that they were going to do something with ABK and all these games are going to come back that that was just pure hopium. People were just hoping on this stuff, and 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 I'm like, but people who had who said that's not going to happen, hey, they are just spending all this money and wasting time to keep the same games everywhere. Like, who said that they were going to make these games from day one? Who said that they are going to do this? They made promises for Call of Duty on a Switch without even talking to the Call of Duty developers. Like, who made these promises? So everybody that had a critical view of this thing was seen as a hater, as a pony, as a, you know, anti, uh, anti consolidation. And they immediately got shot down immediately got made the fool. And I was listening to Porter rock earlier. Shout out to Porter rock. He's going to be on tomorrow, you know, on his show, but he was listening. He was saying how these influences coached people. Sorry about the, like they kind of made customer. people attack other people that didn't like what they wanted to hear instead of listening to the other side and going, maybe we should, you know, that's a good point. Maybe we should discuss this. Maybe this isn't a, a, a slam dunk seal deal. Maybe we should think about it. Um, the, the propaganda and the influences and the, the, all the, the destins and yellow chairs out there were all basically Mister. 
yellow chair. We're all out there telling us that the people that, that had some logic to this deal and me, think about it. You really think they're going to go, like, this is a $70 billion. This is tons of people. They have not released great games with what they have already. Who says they're going to do this all of a sudden with Activision? Oh, that's 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 negativity. Negativity. And 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 they kind of coach them to to tell the people, oh yeah, they could fix Activision, they could fix Blizzard. Oh, they're gonna get all their new games. And meanwhile, they go in there and they lay the ground and get rid of all of them. But the the thing is, is that you are not given the opportunity. You're not looking at it from both sides of the story. You could be a fan of something, but also have doubt as well. And they do not incorporate that because they don't want to hear that. But it was all propaganda, all media spin. And now everybody's sitting here going, guys, we capped for this ABK deal for over two years. And now all it did was made Microsoft realize that they can't survive on their own with their own console. And they got to go put their games everywhere. And they got to get that money back that they spent. Maybe it was a little too much money. And in the same show, they were saying, oh, I think they overpaid for it. I think it I think they overpaid for Activision. They overpaid. Dude, they were looking. I I I you know. They said they overpaid for Activision. Guys, they were looking at the Activision stocks, and when it dropped, that meant that the the deal was when the CMA blocked the deal, the stock dropped, and they were counting their pennies, watching that Activision stock grow up to what Microsoft was going to pay for it, because that will show the positivity of the deal possibly going through. Dude, it is ludicrous how tw- vi- like that they're going back now and going like this was a waste. Yes, because you weren't looking at it from a gamer. That's what we were talking about. We were looking at this from a gamer's perspective. What do we get out of the deal as a gamer? And we get nothing. But these people, these influences went wild with this stuff. I don't know why. But anyway, let me get to these super chats. And then I'm going to try to find that, 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 that part there. But, um, but yeah, it's just wild. Like that we're coming back to this exclusivity again. Zero Steel with nine months VIP. He says, Jez, it's basically exclusives are good. If Microsoft does it, Dustin is a gigantic shill. You heard it. Yep, exactly. Game night with the 10. Thank you so much, man. He goes, I don't get it. When Nintendo had Monster Hunter Rise as a timed exclusive before it went to PC and eventually PlayStation and Xbox, no one batted an eye. But if Sony does it, Pitchforks will be out. And Game Night, to add to that, now one person is saying, well, why isn't the Peach game coming to... PC. Why isn't the Peach game coming out on PlayStation and Xbox? Now, one person is even batting an eye at Nintendo with their exclusive games. It's only Sony. They're like, oh, Sony, your game, like, you're you're not fair with your exclusives. But Nintendo could keep theirs. Like, the, the hypocrisy is absolutely insane. They, I said, they're ants underneath a friggin' rock that you lift up, and they're all running around going, where do we go? Where do we go from here? Because Phil got them going north and south and west is east and all over the place because he has tongue-tied them and confused the hell out of the brand and out of the people that like the brand, if there's anybody left. And then, let me just get these last two and then we'll get a link in there. And Frogs, uh, Drep uh, X3 with the two, he goes, the Activision buyout did no favors for Xbox. Uh Uh-huh, I think they're seeing that now and we're not even three months into this deal. And then B. Licata is legit for 12 months. He goes, I'm golden now. Jez, the pot is really fun. Lots of LOLing. You tell it how it is. Here's another year. You can get you can get uh, a PSN ad. I need the crew. So, B. Licata, you got it, man. Add me on that PlayStation. We're ready to go, baby. Let's go. But I wish I could find it. But, like, to keep berating this whole thing, but it's just amazing on how, how people have come around. And, 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 and what's interesting, Porter Rock was saying that people are saying, like, you know, even, you know, Tim Dog put me, he's like, oh, I've been real the whole time, he wrote to me. Dude, in October, he was calling me out for being upset about this ABK deal, going, why does Microsoft need to spend $7 billion to bring games to Xbox when they didn't do that before with Titanfall and Gears? They didn't have to do these legal fiascos and legal deals and make an Ubisoft own the cloud. They just made games to come to the platform, even with Rise of the Tomb Raider. And I, I, I went at them because all these guys were all high and happy about this ABK deal. And I'm like, guys, this is a waste of time. 
They didn't have to do this. If it was just about bringing games to Xbox, they could have done that in a blink of an eye with a fraction of that money. But I said that, and I was like, oh, yeah, he's a turncoat. He's a hater. He does this thing. And I, I went on a spaces with him. And I was like, I, I told him right exactly how I felt about the whole thing. He's like, oh, yeah, I hear you. I hear you and stuff. Now he's telling me I'm, I, was, I, was, I was right the whole time. I think Tim Dog, it's time for him to come to the grind house because he has to grind some gears, and I got to grind some gears too. So I might get him on here to, to do that stuff. But, but you know, it's just, you got to have an open mind. Like, if you say something that's, that's different, you can't just be like, oh, no, that's hating, and then just dismiss it because that's what they were doing. This was a waste of time. Activision Blizzard King was a waste of time, especially, guys, they were typing up the, the Activision Blizzard King deal because of Candy Crush, you had legit Xbox guys out there who play supposedly are Xbox fans capping for this deal because it was about Candy Crush. That's how desperate and reach reaching they were with this deal to make it good for them. Oh, it's not about Call of Duty going everywhere. It's about Candy Crush. That's the real deal. Phil told us it's about Candy Crush and mobile. Dude, what? What? Are you playing Candy Crush right now? Insane. That's the capping for that. Because Phil said it. Phil's like, oh, it's about mobile and king. <laughs> it's not about it. Candy Crush. Yeah, when's Candy Crush on Xbox? Still a mobile exclusive. What them? They, they're they begging for Helldivers and uh, freaking Final Fantasy. Go, you own Candy Crush. Where's it on Xbox? Let's go. Where's WoW? I, don't, I didn't hear one person. Where's WoW on Xbox? Where is it? That's what I... You own it. Where's WoW on Xbox? Where is it? Anybody? Any Anybody? Did anybody ask where WoW was? You know, add to the list of where contraband is and all that stuff. You know, you know, you know. You own the problem it. is, Jens, a lot of these guys, like we always say, are influencers and they don't know games. You have guys and girls who really don't know that Sony owns the Bloodborne IP and they think that if it gets remade, it's coming everywhere. You have people that just don't know what they really don't know. They don't even like know they, Sony. I mean, clearly Phil must not know that uh, Sony owns Helldivers because he thinks it should be on uh, Xbox. Even though it's their IP. They own it. <laughs> like, exactly. It it's just crazy. It's, it's crazy. crazy. It's it crazy. It I mean, insane, dude. What it is, though, he it knows is, what it's he a trip, does. man. He does it on purpose, right? He's putting it out there because now he's trying to weaponize uh, exclusivity to be some kind of negative thing, right? right? That's there the you strategy. Go. There you that, go. That's what he's yep. doing. Remember when so exactly did, it's all about putting it out there because he knows the crazy Xbox fan base is going to go with whatever he's whatever's said, left. You know. Yeah, whatever's left, yeah. The ones that are left, there ain't that many left. But. <laughs> the control doesn't have enough buttons. But, you know, Captain Play for WoW, he says the control don't have enough buttons for WoW. But, Captain, you can repurpose the share button. They don't use that for anything anyway. We use that for WoW. God damn it. Use that thing. <laughs> You're my number one customer. Get the hell out of here. They're freaking like, they own it. Where is it? You know what's funny is Leech, everybody's saying make your own hell divers. Yeah, Halo. Know what's funny? is that last year it was telling Sony and Lion Jim Ryan, you know, from the retirement home, go make your own Call of Duty. Go make your own multiplayer game. And he was like, we, we can't do it. We can't do it. And they're like, oh, he's lying. Jim Lion Ryan, he's lying. We, go make your own Call of Duty. We got Call of Duty. You go make your own. And now they're sitting here begging for Helldivers too? Well, Paris is the same person who said, hey, you know, if call if you don't buy, you don't spend this amount of money to make games multiplayer. You make them exclusive. Yeah. Are you a clown? When you only got twenty something million consoles, you don't make that exclusive. It's not going to help. They won't do anything but kill that franchise. You're yeah. an idiot. But but from, he's wait, an idiot. But he's an when expert. You got thirty something million people subscribe to Game Pass. You're. Let me, let me uh, tell he's, you he's something. He's an expert at sucking. Well, never mind. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. He he's a, he's an expert in going like, well, you know, um. Uh, 
you you spend all this money, but then you got to make that exclusive to the 25 million consoles and PCs that are, and, you know, just make it exclusive to this finite market that's here that, that that's showing that they don't buy the games. These games are not selling on these platforms, but, you know, you just take it off of the platforms that it's selling on and just put it on here. That's good business strategy. But meanwhile, that's fine. But when he talks about then Sony, he's like, well, there's no way they could sustain those exclusive games on their platform. They need to put it everywhere. But Microsoft could take away from PlayStation who's selling the games, but PlayStation can't survive just selling the games on its platform. Like, the hypocrisy is absolutely insane. Listen, Sony wants more money. They're greedy. They want more money. They want more yield for the things that they're making. So they're going to find ways to milk the franchises, to put them on other platforms, to get the money back for that. But they're keeping the PlayStation as the primary piece. That's the point. Microsoft abandoned its console and made PC a better place to experience Xbox games. And by the way, now they're making PlayStation a better place to play Xbox games. Ain't it the truth? Holy crap. You believe that we had today, we had pray for Xbox, quote, from Digital Foundry, where they actually (laughs) said, (laughs) oh my goodness, they cannot get over who would have thought Pentiment would be the Achilles heel of Digital Foundry? And in speaking of that, an excellent name of the gaming grindhouse, sign my ass with the Seek 100. <laughs> he goes, media Xbox are changing with the booty wind. Oh, man. You know what happens to booty. Here it comes. Grindhouse Records, y'all! Grindhouse Records! Booty Bounce. Trash Finger Quality. There you go. Wouldn't it be? And thank you. Sign my ass. Excellent name. I like that one. Sign my ass. So, uh, yeah, I got a song for everybody. <laughs> Again, exclusive access to all the VIP songs. You'll hear them unreleased. They may not be here, but you'll hear them unreleased. And you'll vote which comes on to the shows and what gets put on there as the, as the ultimate grinder. But talking about this, Let's talk about look at look at the frame rates just before I even hit play. Motown Philly back again. That's right, man. Vs. That's the booty bounce. PlayStation Five 120 hertz output. Xbox 120 hertz output. You got 99 frames in Pentiment and 60 frames on Xbox. They said it was a glitch. It was a bug. It was a bug. Yeah, it was a cricket. That's what it was because nobody came in. Let's see what Digital Foundry has to say, and then we'll go to Frogs and Link. Pray for the Xbox. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Did they just stop with pray for the Xbox? Oh, my goodness. You put your first party exclusive games on PlayStation and they play better? Oh, God. You get the album if you go there. <laughs> Anyway, pray for the Xbox. Pray, pray for Mojo. Pray, okay. for pray for them because if, if we have another, um, they need they need a uh, Ghostwire here. Tokyo. Oh my gosh! Like, if, dude, I, I'm still baffled by Ghostwire like, Tokyo. It's not even that it runs Ula. worse. It's like it also has like worse quality RT. Way worse like, RT. It's, it's refl- like, what on earth is going like, on look, here? Realistically, they should be identical or like comparable right but the idea that a first party release is significantly worse on that platform that just doesn't fly man i pray for the xbox pray, pray, for, pray, for, pray okay. for the xbox pray from for digital them, foundry if, if that, another, is, that is that uh, is coming they need, they need a uh, ghostbuster tokyo Oh my gosh, like, if, Dude, I, I'm still baffled by Ghostwire like, Tokyo. It's not even that it runs Ula. worse. It's like, it also has, like, worse quality RT. Way worse like, RT. It's, it's refl- like, what on gaming. earth is going <laughs> like, on Like, look, here? realistically, they should be... Look at this ray tracing from Ghostwire Tokyo. This game came out first on PlayStation 5 as an exclusive. 
Uh oh, uh oh. Bruhaha. Ex wait. Bruhaha. Exclusive. Ha 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 ha. You know, you got to scare people because their ass cheeks pucker up when you say exclusive nowadays because it's like, it's not pro-consumer at all. But anyway, just Ghostwire Tokyo-wise came out a year before on PlayStation exclusively. Seven billion dollars later, it comes out in your good old Game Pass and this is on the most powerful console in the world. And look at the ray tracing. You know what's funny? The first time I heard the word ray tracing was from Phil Ness's mouth announcing Project Scarlet. Frames and ray tracing, the clown said. Look at this. You own the studio. You had a year to fix it. And you put out trash-ass quality. And now you make a big deal about putting Pentiment on the PlayStation. A bedtime story for gamers. And it's running at 99 frames on PlayStation at launch. And 60 frames for the last year and a half. On the most powerful machine, Digital Foundry went out there playing with the magnets and the cereal. Got the exclusive hands-on. What do they say? Pray for the Xbox. <laughs> Pray for the Xbox. Pray for the Xbox. Here it comes! Oh my god! Oh my god! What? Like, this, like, guys, this writes itself. Like, this is absolutely horrendous. The reset. What, what can, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. That should be on the box of every Xbox that you purchase. Whatever you could think of that could go wrong will and has gone wrong. It is the most ridiculous, ridiculous. Aaron, come on, man. You heard, pray for Xbox. Pray for them, Aaron. Don't justify this. Nobody gives a shit about Pentiment, but the, the this is the problem. When you get past thought number one and you go to really thinking with your brain, the idea that they are going out of their way to port a game to a competitor, their own first-party game to a competitor, and it's running better over there. That's the issue. Give a shit about Pentiment. It's a goddamn bedtime story. But the 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 facts are, they are putting their first party shit on their competition, and it plays better over there. That is insane, insane. Yeah, play them at sixty frames. There you go. Play them at 60 frames, because I remember when the... Th oh, man. When the Xbox launched, everybody was jerking around for 120 hertz. Oh, we have more 120 hertz games than PlayStation. 120 hertz or more on, on, on Xbox. We got the... Because they're playing cross-gen games with higher frame rates. How does this happen? Who approves this shit? Who's playing this on a dev kit going, guys, uh... I got 100 frames out there. And where is Booty going, you know what? Wait a second. Let's make sure Oz has 100 frames before we go ship this out because this is not a good PR look. Where is the people there to check on this shit? Where are the people going, guys? We need, par like, we need parity between the two of them. We can't put that out better over there. What is that going to say about us? They're so up and at them about PR and what they say and what they say, but they do the most stupidest shit. Who checks on this stuff? No. Like, Phil Spencer should be walking in there and and, and seeing when they're about to ship. Oh, okay, you're about to launch a Pentiment? Hold on. Phil Spencer just came in. Would you ship that? <laughs> what you just played? Would you ship that? <laughs> what you just played? Who's asking that question? <laughs> I need to know. I need to know who's asking that question. But what do you guys think? Link, Frogs, what do you think about this pray for Xbox 
per Digital Foundry, first party games running better on PlayStation. And who knows what's to come next? We know what it is. Link said it before. This is a bunch of delusional people. We've we've known how well that. Um, the PlayStation 5 can utilize some things. And that's why it does confuse me with PS5 Pro rumors. Maybe Do we need it? Maybe. You know, and I, I don't think the full potential of the first party devs have come out and really shown us what the PS5 can do. Or maybe they have. Well, I just don't know it. But, yeah. Th- no, anybody who thinks... Don't, don't listen for all... Yeah, we, we, do. <laughs> we do. No, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying... There's nothing wrong with having... What I'm saying to you is... The eats monsters for breakfast and doing all this stuff. They still focus on power, power, power. Look, they they can't get the software together as far as getting creative developers in there to not mess up their their own IPs that they have internally, like the Halo and Gears, and even Forza franchise. Now, these developers come in there and they say, "Hey, you're just gonna do Halo. You're just gonna do Gears. You're just gonna do Forza," and they're messing the franchises up. Halo's destroyed. Gears since four, part four has been basically like whatever. And now Forza, with what they did, it's a game as a service. It's not taken on well. I think they have some problems over there internally, and it's with managing. I and and and, and hear me out. Sony has the problems, Nintendo has the problems, not to the extent that the Xbox gaming division does. Nowhere near to the extent that the Xbox gaming division does. So, yeah, I, I think that you have to, when you say pray for Xbox, I think he's talking about it as a whole. Like, I don't, I think they just keep doing hardware because they can just do it. But I honestly don't see why they just don't stop doing hardware, put software everywhere, and become that publisher that they want to really become. They really want to become that publisher. That's the way you go. They're just trying to save face with the fan base that's still semi-loyal to them. But I don't understand how anybody could say this is their primary place to play and still be loyal to them for over more than a decade. They've been lying to you. They've been lying to you. you. Do you think lying to you? Lying to you. Do you think? And Big Razzo says at this point scenario of whatever you can do, Xbox, I can do better. PlayStation. Like, do you really think that this PlayStation is uh, so much easier to develop for than the Xbox because of the scaling between the two consoles and what they uh, chose? Of course, to these devs, yes, it is. Yeah, so it is. So, so their own yeah. devs see this as well yeah. in the ports that they're making. Oh, they're like, look, we could get this performance out of PlayStation. This is great. How easy it is. Meanwhile, theirs is a bug. Supposedly, it makes no sense. Yeah, it's it's yeah. According to Dez, like Link said, it seems that and they're just having an easier time. There was another thing I wanted to, to point out here, and then this was going back to what the sale things were. But look at this breakdown, and and the one I stood out the most was Hogwarts Legacy, and, and yeah, people agree in the chat. They're agreeing like, yeah, you know, it's just the PlayStation was built for that. Josh was saying that, but look at Hogwarts Legacy, and that's a good example because Hogwarts was the most popular, biggest selling game last year. And look at the breakdown. PlayStation 5 sold 58% of that game. Switch 29, PS4 6, PS4, and the Xbox Series 4%. The series of that consoles. That blows my mind. Two, this is the most popular game. All right? You could say whatever Sony did with marketing, but how the hell does that Xbox even have 4% over the Switch? Like, the and the PlayStation Switch. 4. Like, this is the most popular say this. game. And look at EA Sports. This- well, I'm going to do EA Sports, the soccer game, which is a huge global sport that they play. It's FIFA, what it was. Switch has 36%, PS5, 35 PS4, 23 Xbox, 6 I don't know if that's series or whatever the hell it is, but why? This is what I mean about mindshare. This is the issue. This is the, like, why games skip Xbox. This is why developers go, is it worth it for us to put the time in to develop for the series console when it's going to sell that different? Now, 4% is something. It's something It's better than zero, right? But when you look at relatively what the other consoles are selling at, it's not even close. So how the hell you could be, uh, yo, you put it on PlayStation and Switch and you are accounting for just about over three quarters of the inst- of, of sales just by two platforms. 
this is a problem. And that's why when people go, it's not about the console, it's not about the console. Well, when you keep doing things like this, when games are selling and they're not selling on your console, then people are going to miss your platform and not going to waste their development time because it costs money to port these games over. Is it worth it for 4%, for 3%? And this is the same reason why I said Sony putting their games on Xbox. Who's putting their games on that on the smallest install base that's not buying games? Where's that a benefit? But if you look at Xbox, yeah, put your games on the Switch and PlayStation. 75% of your sales are, are on those platforms. Why wouldn't you put your games over there? This is a perfect example of why Xbox is putting their shit on PlayStation. It's mindshare. It's it's not even mindshare. It's more of the people not buying games over there. And you know what else? The other thing that this is an issue, I've seen a lot of people worried about their digital libraries. Like, they don't feel that they, they shouldn't continue to invest in Xbox's ecosystem because Xbox's ecosystem is all messed up, dude. It's all over the place. There's games on PC that are not on console. There's games on console that are not on PC. There's games in cloud on the phone that are not on console or PC. Some games get, you see those numbers. Sometimes they launch a game on cloud. Sometimes they just launch a game on console and PC. Sometimes they just launch a game on all three of them. Their market is all broken up. So like, what do you own? What do you have access to? Yes. It's not You see the same. recently. Some will play anywhere. Dead, they, did dead, they did Dead Island in. Um, yes, in Ultimate, had, right? right? Which only in Ultimate. Yeah. They know what they're doing. They're all over the place. Like there, there, there are games on PC that are, that they're game. Like you know that other one we were talking about. Dustin. Dustin was that. Dustin was confusing. Uh, uh, what is it? The um, Death Stranding. Oh, that's on Xbox. No, it's on. It's on PC Game Pass, which is not Xbox Game Pass on console. And it's so there. What and who kind published of e- that game on PC, Jazz? But wait, but who, who? But how is that an ecosystem? When how is that one place? Like- when the games are all over the place, depending Sony, on what you play on, Sony, depends on what you have access to. Yes. Sony owns the IP of Death Stranding. This won't happen again. No, I, I, I understand on, that. And 505 it on, published it, I think. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm trying there. to say it. <laughs> right? Yeah, 505 published it, so they get to say where it goes on PC. No, I, and I understand, but what I'm trying to say is how do they call that an Xbox ecosystem when it's not unified at all like there are games it's that are not. on pc the shit is trash. That are not the on console running. and there's games that you buy on console that maybe play anywhere it's fragmented out of all over the place so it, it's all over the place and that's Damn. my point it's not about that Str- and Death stranding is one of those examples of a game that's not on the console but on pc but it's mm-hmm. in game pass but not on console game pass how in do you Dead say Island. that's the xbox ecosystem when they're fragmented depending on what you boot up Dead island um was not on PC Game Pass Ultimate. It's just on the console. Really? It's not, yeah, in it's their not store? on PC Game Pass. Nope. Mm-mm. Not on PC Game Pass. Let's check. Dead. We said Dead Island check it 2? Out. Dead Island 2 is there. only available on Xbox and Game Pass. It's not on PC. Just console. <laughs> You're right. With Dead, Dead Island 2, right? Yep. And you wonder how how you know that because if you look at the Windows Store because that's the only way to access Game Pass on PC. I'm not seeing Dead Island in there. Actually, let me check in the Xbox app. Let's see if it's over there because that's another confusing thing. That Xbox app says so like, "Oh, get the game," but the game is not. Let me see if it's on uh, PC Game Pass because Ultimate. <laughs> look, I boot this up. You got a free Game Pass Ultimate. Stop it. See what I mean? This is what happens when you boot up your, your PC. This is the facts. Look. They you're granted they just given you the months. I, I claim now. No. Maybe later. Let me alone. Let's see. We're gonna go Dead Island 2. And this is what yeah, I was you're told. Right. This it's morning. not in X, it's, it's not in PC Game Pass. Mm-mm. So there you it's go. That adds the to the Xbox fragmentation. That adds to the see? Yep. So if you have a console, you could get Dead Island 2. But if you could get but you have PC Game Pass, like here, I don't have Dead Island 2. Because the game needs to be made for the Windows Store in order to get it. This is where I mean. How do you sell a unified platform when it is, you need a friggin' degree to figure out what is where and what is which? 
they they are mismatched and and the reason why is because the devs are picking and choosing what they want that's the part the devs are like well know what i'm not putting it in the windows store i'll just put it on we'll just make it work on on console and the and microsoft is not holding if you remember, do you remember when they had the Xbox Live Arcade and how stringent they were? And Jonathan Blow, his name was, pause, um, you know, was uh, the guy who made Braid was very adamant about how strict Microsoft was in making certain games had to have Xbox Live Universal. It had to add certain features in order to be featured in um, Xbox Live Arcade. And Microsoft was very strict in ensuring what, what features and what games need to have. With this Game Pass thing, they're all over the place. They're like, take whatever you want. Oh, I just want to put it on the cloud. Oh, sure, put it on the cloud. Uh, you know, I just want it on console. It's all over the place because they're trying to appease the developers, but they're not creating a unified system. It's all over the place. The games here, and yeah, Death Stranding, Death Stranding and Dead Island 2 are two perfect examples. How do you sell that to somebody? If I got to sit you down and, and do a, dia- a diagram of what you have and what you get access to for your $17 a month, who the hell is going to waste their time with that? And nonetheless, this is billed for casuals. Only a dollar. Join in. Well, what do I, why do I have games over there? Not yet. Well, no, nah, that don't work. Crush saves are not enabled. Crush, no, you can't do that. No, sorry, that's not over there. So when he talks about Xbox as a unified platform, they messed up entirely because it is all fragmented in their own ecosystem. That you just so get so discouraged. Well, you can't play Death Stranding, Aaron, if you want to play Xbox the best for Game Pass. <laughs> Explain that one. You can't play Death Stranding. You get it on PC Game Pass. But you can't. What I'm saying is, is you cannot sell a product that's so fragmented and call it an ecosystem. Again, it's chum. It's chum. You're just chumming the water. Yeah, yeah, a little game here, a little bit game there. That's all it is. It's all it's all throwing shit against the wall. But when you have an install base, that's not buying shit like this, dude. But you want to know what, though? We're going to take a little breath from Microsoft, and we're going to go into Nintendo holding it down. So today, Nintendo told uh, Yuzu to pay them $2.4 bi- Was it billion or million dollars? Do you remember? Let me see what it was. Two point four million dollars. It was million. It was million. Million. Yeah. And they basically just destroyed it. Like you, it, it, I heard saw people. You can't download it. Yuzu is done. It was an emulator for uh, Switch games, and they even took down, I think, the 3DS one. And you see people crying about, oh, my my, uh, yo. Let me tell you something. I saw somebody go, game preservation. Game preservation. Let me ask you a question. The people, these emulators, game preservation. So I see so many people on Twitter. I don't have to buy a Switch. I could play them in 4K60 with you, Zoo. So, but game preservation. You're not supposed to emulate the game if you don't own it. So are you telling me that all you dudes are going out there buying a $70, $60 Nintendo cartridge and putting it on your shelf so then you could download the emulator and play it legally for game preservation? Is that what we're doing? Because I don't see anybody buying it. They're like, I don't need to buy a Switch. I could play these games better than the Switch. That's Nintendo's fault for not giving us 4K60. We got Lulu and now we got Yuzu. So, uh, freeloaders, yeah. Game pres- uh, Dude, I'll laugh. The game preservation. That's right, Nintendo. Shut it down. That's right. Shut it all down. Say, go buy a Switch, bitch. There's your new line for the Switch 2. There you go. I gave Nintendo their line. Switch 2. There it is. Stop. Enough. But I just laughed at game preservation. 2.4 million. Yuzu's done. You can't download it anymore. It's done. But I want to see that they're going out there. They don't have a Switch. They go buy, they, they go line up at GameStop and buy a $60 cartridge game and then put it on their shelf 
and then they go, now I could legally download the ROM for the emulator. That That's what you're doing for game preservation? Is that what we're doing now? I want to know how many of you actually have the cartridges and own a Switch. Oh, well, please. And it's Nintendo's fault because they don't ship a 4K. You could play games better than the Switch. Listen, it's beautiful, but it's not game preservation. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's not game preservation. And Nintendo got their line for the next one. Buy a Switch too, bitch. There you go. There you go. So you, Yuzu is done. And believe me, this is, this is, it's amazing how quick Nintendo got them on this thing. But the problem was is that Yuzu put, it, put their, their code or with their stuff behind donations or behind monetary stuff. So they were charging for the emulators uh, or putting some monetary from that. So that is a no-no. You don't do that. But, you know, everybody wants to make a buck, right? But there it is. That Yuzu emulator. Nintendo filed the lawsuit, and they have to pay $2.4 million to settle. And they are scrapped out. And we're done. Emulators and ROMs, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. But I can tell you right now, it's not for game preservation. So stop with that argument. Oh, the game preservation. We have to defend it, these guys. Oh, really? Because really, that's the only way to uh to get a Switch game. Like, you can't... You got to own a Switch or buy physical. Because you can't buy it from their store if you don't have a Switch. Yeah, they were making money on it. So that's the reason why Nintendo hunted them down. But Nintendo got the snipers out there, dude. They, they don't mess around. With their IP, man, you don't mess with their stuff. You know? Do you guys have anything on the Nintendo lawsuit? Uh, Frog, anything on it? The Yuzu? I mean, people, people get what they deserve. Yeah. It, it is, is what it is. It is what it is. Speaking yeah. of, you know, you know Frog, like, we're coming to your favorite topic now. They should no, know better. Yeah, no, you know better. Speaking about uh, Goo Goo Gaga games. On their little Goo Goo Gaga. Baby little... Where is it? My little baby little Fisher Price plastic toy. <laughs> oh, you knew it was coming, Grinders. You knew it was coming on that. On their little goo goo ga And their killer games that are. Oh, yeah, it's a little. Uh, the little Animal Crossing. Hey, oh, who was a buddha buddha buddha? Who was a buddha buddha buddha? Oh, man. Oh, no, I don't like this one. I don't like this one. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Who, who's talking about Goo Goo Gaga? Talking about Nintendo Goo Goo Gaga. He got his own Goo Goo Gaga. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure, True. True with the five. It's not burst of my bubble. I, listen, Nintendo's never going to win this thing. All right, and this is what makes people go even crazier. People are going to go out of their way now to do it. So I know how it is, but I just think for game preservation, please. We all know what it's about. Please don't don't. I, I just saw some people talking about game preservation. I thought that was hilarious. But shout out to True SSJ Five says, "Sorry to burst your bubble, but people already got the emulator archived. There are even others ri rising to take its place. Ryu Jinx still exists, exactly, and Ryu Jinx doesn't charge for it." That's how come they could probably get away with that loophole because they don't charge for their... Uh, it wasn't behind the PayPal. That was the whole reason why they went after Yuzu, which Yuzu's been around for a while. But they went after Yuzu because they were doing... They were, they got a little egregious with their trying to make some money on that. You're my thing. number one customer. So that's the reason why. So that's why I think Riot Jinx will still stick around. But but I just think it's funny how it was about game preservation. Like, come on, guys. We know what... We, we know. That was the funny part here. And then here we go. <laughs> Where is it? Speaking about Goo Goo Gaga. Oh, goodness gracious. What frogs? What are we doing here with this thing? On their little Goo Goo Gaga, my little baby little Fisher Price plastic toy. And their killer games that are, oh, yeah, it's the little, uh, the little Animal Crossing. On their little Goo Goo Gaga. Well, there's a Goo Goo Gaga customer. for you right here. Uh, Veggie with the Seek at 129. He goes, problem with Xbox is the build. As DirectX is made to run best on NVIDIA cards and not AMD. That's a great point, Veggie. But Microsoft killed that cooperation with NVIDIA years before the Series X, the Series consoles. 
it's no rocket science. Yeah, they are, you know, it's interesting. You're right. Thanks, Vedger, because I do think that it is, uh, you know, issues with their, their, with the AMD chip and DirectX, just, you know, with the ray tracing and stuff like NVIDIA. But how does, uh, so, I guess Sony doesn't use DirectX. They use their own shit. So, uh, yeah, Microsoft with their, again, Microsoft too much. Windows came to bite them. But speaking about biting, um, Grinders, this was announced today on Xbox Wire. This brand new SpongeBob on their little Goo Goo Gaga, Goo Goo Gaga Series X. Now, typically, this would have been some sort of uh, raffle that they would have given away. Um, but this is not. This is an exclusive limited edition Best Buy SpongeBob SquarePants Series X. It comes with All-Star Brawl 2, a banger of a game sitting at a 70 Metacritic. Yellow, just like the box. It comes with that game. But there is a humdinger to this whole thing. On this Fisher Price, my little baby little Fisher Price plastic toy, couldn't say it better myself. Comes with it a hefty, 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 hefty price. I was told that PlayStation Five left unchecked and not competing with Xbox if Xbox consoles go away and Sony could charge whatever they want the PlayStation 5 Pro could be an astronomical $700 if Sony was not kept in check by Microsoft consoles Sony will get greedy and egregious well Spongebob A few moments later. Decides to drop a bundled Nickelodeon All-Stars for a whopping $699.99. This... Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Oh, no. Holy oh, Spirit, no. Oh, activate. No. Hit Holy that like Spirit, button. Luchi, activate. got him. Luchi, activate. get him. Activate. Holy yeah. Spirit, activate. Seven. What? Who? First off, there's so many different ways wrong with this. First off, it's for the kids. They're for the kids. It's a one terabyte SSD. One terabyte. The same size of the, the one that they were giving away for fire sales. But like 350. A one terabyte SSD. It comes with all-star brawl Metacritic. Where is this game? Let me see. Wait a second. Wait a second. This game. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. It's coming out with a game that came out. Stop, stupid microphone. It came out in November of 2023. It's not even a new release. It came out last Thanksgiving. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Oh, no. Holy oh. Spirit, activate. <laughs> Holy Spirit, activate. 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 And it came out not only on the Xbox in November. It came out on the Switch, the PS4, the PlayStation 5, Windows, Xbox Series consoles, and the Xbox One. It is not even a next-gen exclusive for the most powerful machine. And it came out in November. You're getting an old-ass game. You're getting an old-ass game. 
that can be purchased. <laughs> that can be purchased right now, like on sale. Where is this thing? Well, they probably increased the price now. Then they announced this. This Travis, this is the craziest box. It was fifty dollars. Was I don't. Uh... What? They got this game bundled. So the game is 50. Say the game is 50. Came out in November of last year. It's a one terabyte Xbox. Where the hell are they getting the $200 overhead? Of this price. The, the traditional Xbox Series S. The Series S, first of all, not even on sale. The Series X is $500, right? You could go buy the Series X for $499, right? On sale for, for $450. On sale for $375 during the holiday. They added another $200 to this box. With a game from November 2023 and a same one terabyte hard drive. Guys, they, they what happened to the what happened to the wrappers? What happened to the condom things that they put on the thing? Why couldn't they make a SpongeBob wrap? Save you $200. The Nickelodeon tax. LM says the Nickelodeon tax. Oh, Jesus. The Nickelodeon tax. But what? Who approved this stuff? They're tone deaf. They, 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 the people over there, I don't think they have a clue as to what the gamers, A, on their console want and the gamers in the industry be want. And I think that's why they're having such a problem with everything they do over at the Xbox Game Studios. Phil Spencer is a liar. He's con he's consistently lied. Uh, Booty, uh, 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 Bonnie, he's getting them to lie now. Mm. I mean, they consistently come out and they're tone deaf. And they count consistently for the last and the gamers um, in the over a decade. We've heard you. We understand well, what game and you do guys don't understand what it is. This is why you're getting out so three to one. I have my beef with with PlayStation. I have I have my beef with Nintendo, but the biggest beef I have with Xbox is they're tone deaf. Uh, people that primarily game there aren't asking for better. You can you consistently hear them push the Game Pass narrative. This is why your console, as far as in the hardware space, will eventually die and you'll just be a software thing. Game Pass is not, it's a, it's failing. It's but, not but doing from, what it needs to do. They don't and, even and, do this and, with and, their and, own oh, IP. Jazz, and on top of that, Sony's cloud <laughs> and streaming is better. Oh, yeah, I know. I don't, I don't understand how you beat out, how can you get beat out <laughs> all the narratives did Sony come out with the with the the VR two and and, and and kind of cuff it up? Yes, I I do agree with them. The VR two going to PC, maybe they get some more leverage and maybe they kind of get into a different market. If it's not selling where you need it to because it's a high price item, put it where it can sell. Put it where it may best be adaptable. So I get it. Throwing all your games on PC day and day is not how you adapt to losing. That's just saying we've given up and we're we're trillion dollar company. So if it if it makes it makes it if it doesn't does Sony could never just say here you but from Nintendo could never just say here you got everything special, in the service we've seen special editions before that come with the, the digital codes right. they they add maybe another hundred or, or something dollars this thing they added two hundred dollars yes at the at the price you have to ask yourself who is this for and you know who this is for. This is for the people who just want to say, "I'm gonna buy it, put it on eBay, and try to get some money off it." Mm. This is for this is not for this is not for somebody's kid. This is not for some grown man. This is for the enthusiasts. This well, because it's, a, it's a game from November. For, it's it's not even a new game. Yeah, I would say, and, hey, and if I the don't... game's launching, maybe okay, I can see 
Maybe the, you, the game is from. It's you, an old recycled game from me November. And you both said the same. Me and you both said the same thing. You would have figured they would have did this with Starfield. Yeah, they, they didn't, didn't even do this with Starfield. You, you, but they did it with. But see what I'm saying? That's why I said they're tone deaf. They don't. They don't have a direction. They're clueless as what How they're doing. How crazy frog and would it just, be if they did Starfield and like, you, and, or if they did even the Diablo one and have the top glow red? You see, you see what I'm saying? Like they did, a, they did a bundle with Diablo, and guess what? They did nothing special they for it. They did nothing. It was just even the game they in knew, the box. Even though, they, even though they knew that 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 acquisition, I mean, the Activision Blizzard acquisition was coming, they're so toned. <laughs> this is why I look at them. Neil this said, is why this I look at them. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I just look at them and say, you know what? They they get what they deserve. I feel bad for the people who who truly love gaming on the Xbox and they've invested so much in the Xbox and they truly like. Because look, G four hundred, he plays mostly primarily on Xbox, but he said it himself. He said, I own a PS four because I know there's just some games that aren't gonna come to Xbox and I'm not holding my breath. He said, Final Fantasy is one of those games like I knew I had to have a PS four. God of War and Charter, Gran Turismo. There, he said there were so many games that even though he primarily games on Xbox, he had to have a PlayStation because if he didn't, he would lose out on such a big. And 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 that's what I was looking at when people were crying about these JRPGs. Well, you guys kind of did that to yourselves because you didn't buy them there. They didn't sell well there. So now when you know PlayStation Five is a JRPG machine, and you're and why it's on the Xbox, you're the blame. The community is to blame. The community you know, from, and Microsoft I was talking primarily. about Digital Foundry, saying pray for Xbox. I'm going to do my Digital Foundry, Grinds Foundry. Let's zoom in here. Let's see what it says on the box. What is this? 4K, 120 frames per second. Oh, shit. Oh, and there's the high-velocity architecture uh, tramp stamp right next to it. But, far, like The thing is, is like this is $700 and for it's not even their own IP. They didn't do the Starfield. They make the raps. Like, like, how do you not like what? Who like what is? It makes no. You're selling it with a game from November. This is really just like a SpongeBob diehard collector's thing, and that's all they're doing with it. Which is it's so weird because it's not even like the game's releasing. Like it's from November, totally random. And it's, I think it's just another way of how, you know how they do these in raffles? I just think they're just trying to, they're like, hey, you know what? We're not going to raffle this one off. Let's just uh, put this one exclusively on 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 Best Buy drops or whatever the hell this is. Who Who is this for? $700. That's what, Holy. that's what you have to ask yourself, Jess. Who, who is this console who for? Thought the, who is it? Who's but you want to know what? I want to see the PS5 Pro comes out of six ninety nine. Now all these people are going to have the sticker shock. But everybody's looking like, oh, it's just a collector's so, item. It's seven hundred. Dude, it's a seven hundred dollar console that was on sale for three fifty, selling you bundling a game from November two thousand twenty two, two thousand twenty three. PS PS4 Pro comes out. It'll be a five ninety nine console easily. Well, easily I want to see the. I want to. I'm going to save this. We'll save grinders. We'll save it. We'll just pin this up, Aaron. Put a little pin in it. And then when the PlayStation 4 Pro, <laughs> we're just gonna put a pin in it, ladies and gentlemen. We're just gonna when put a grindhouse yeah, when that pin. PS5 Pro come, we'll, we'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. We're just gonna put a little pin. We'll stick a little pin in this. Just, just hit the little button. We'll stick a little pin. We'll timestamp this, and then we'll come back when we see Dustin, Cookie Monster, and Mr. Yellow Chair getting all ready. When Sony talks about the PS5 Pro and it's it's selling at six hundred dollars in the danger zone as usual, or six fifty, and we're gonna come back and we're gonna say, oh, the sticker shock of a seven hundred dollar console was nowhere to be found when SpongeBob was touting his ass all over the streets. But get ready. Wait, wait, watch until so. Uh, uh, yeah, I went and asked the PS4 Pro, the PS Pro with um, uh, upscaling and and all this advanced AI and all this other shit and all this other stuff. I uh, was selling the the PS4 5 Pro at um, at uh, six hundred and fifty dollars. Watch, Dustin and Gary is 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 uh he's gonna do the uh the uh what is it the Colt Eastwood O face. Oh, 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 face. He's going to do the cold. Uh, they're all going to be like, and they little they're going to be shocked. They're going to do the Hillary Clinton look. Like, oh, oh, $700. For six on Sony is greedy. Uh, watch. I've never seen a scene what happens you know, when you know Sony doesn't buy themselves. <laughs> yeah, the other thing, and, and I didn't even, we didn't even discuss this too face. much because I heard Link say it. 
Yeah, I do pin in it. agree that we may need we may need a pro, right? Oh, but let's get a wanna... pro. Let's see what happens. But I well, want to see well, the sticker shot. Oh. No we mass got, adoption. We have a lo- we have a we have a lot of games coming from uh, studios, third party studios. That Sony's made deals and say, "Hey, can you make this game? We'll fund it." Right? <laughs> We've seen them do that with Neo, which they, from what I gather, they own the Neo You're IP. The one That's theirs. You know, even though we had, uh, you know, and so I'm just like, Microsoft back in the day used to kind of do that. Why don't they do that now instead of complaining about this game needs to be here? You know, you're complaining about Final Fantasy. Why don't you do your your deals with these companies and say, hey, you know, can you make us a a, a game? You know, hey, can we get can we get Dragon Quest? You know why? Because it wouldn't do numbers on Xbox. It wouldn't sell. We know what's going on. And 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 the, and the people who really play these games, these RPGs, and they know what's going on. You wouldn't say, "Oh, I got to go buy an Xbox just for Dragon Quest." You would sit there and say, "Man, that game is is not going to sell." There's so many games that come to Xbox where I'm like, "Why is that over there? Like, that's not going to do nothing." Like, um, what's the RPG that that the Switch got first, and then Xbox got it, and part two, part two came to PlayStation, Octopath Traveler, but part one never did. They knew that game wasn't going to sell on the Xbox, but guess what? They put it there anyway. It didn't sell. Point point proven, part two didn't come. They know what's going on. They know. They know what's going on. They know. They're acting. They're acting. (laughs) Freaking D Riders and Dustin Legary, freaking. Dude, this, this, I, got the, I got on. all their faces when when Sony announces the console and the, and the the price. This is them. Oh, I can't wait. There it is. There's their face. Oh, oh, what do you mean? This is the most expensive console ever. Meanwhile, the the SpongeBob one, a, a, a kids console with a game from November, with a freaking game from November 2023, a, a, a kids a kids game, not even the new SpongeBob game. And seven hundred freaking dollars for an Xbox Series console with a one terabyte hard drive. No, no face. No, nobody's this, saying anything. Watch. This is ridiculous. Sony comes out of the PS5 Pro and and Mark Cerny's like, "Hi everybody, let me tell you about the SSDs <laughs> at the next level, and we're gonna have AI upscaling and all the goodies and all the goodies." And and he's gonna talk about all the hype of the PS5 Pro, and he's gonna be like, "Holy crap! Holy crap!" And he's gonna be like, "And now watch our games. Look at this, and the games are gonna look like, inc- oh my god, it's running at 4K." And he's like, "Yes, this is all due to." The SSD and, and everybody's like, right "Oh my God!" And he's like, "And now the price six hundred and forty five nine nine." And everybody's like, "Oh!" Here they go with the faces. Here comes Dustin Legary. Too much for PlayStation greed. PlayStation greed. Sony not kept in check. There it is. Oh, Aaron, blow it at your ass, dude. Limited edition console versus a standard Pro. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, excuse me. A standard pro? That makes no sense. A standard pro. You mean a more powerful he's, he's console? On that Gaga shit. Yeah, Aaron. A more powerful console. A mid-gen refresh more powerful than the trash ass one terabyte SpongeBob wipe your ass. You can't compare those two. So, but there they come out. Aaron, you'll be the first one with the face. There it is. You shit yourself. Holy shit. Sony, but the message will be Sony is unchecked. They unchecked. Unchecked, Aaron. You seem pretty hype about the goddamn SpongeBob. I don't know. You seem pretty hype. You don't care about the price. You like, oh, okay, seven hundred dollars. All of a sudden, I, Sony announces seven hundred dollars. Here goes your face. I will tell you something, Jess. Shit himself. I'm playing this Final. Fan- I'm playing this Final Fantasy uh, Rebirth, right? And I have about ten hours in the game. And I tell you what, man, <laughs> some of these bosses aren't easy. <laughs> these bosses. <laughs> these bosses are. These bosses are challenging. I can do this all day, dude. Oh, man. I'm going to play that. There you go. Mr. Yellow Chair. Mr. Yellow Chair. It's like, who fought it? Oh, my God. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And speaking of all, this has been the night of flip flop <laughs> Flip floppers. Flip floppers. I hot pancakes. Dude. Exclusives, we brought up, so when we were saying about how exclusive matter and all the stuff and about why you develop for one platform and everybody's trying to put their games everywhere, well, wouldn't you guess um, another dev comes out 
to explain why the Uh-oh. uniqueness of working on one. Let, let me guess. Let me guess. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> Jez, let me guess the developer. I'm I I'm gonna guess. Is it High Moon Studios? No, that's a different one. We got uh, where's this oh, okay. one? We got okay, because uh. Wait, I think I Ooh. got this one. High no, Moon, High Moon hey, Studios. Somebody just, from like, High Moon Studios was on it today. High Moon Studios hey, laid, he was on laid it. the SmackDown. Where is and that? they basically said, "Hey, we want you to. We don't want you to game pass our stuff. We want you to buy it. We want. We want. We want you to buy it." Where is and, it? And and you know they've said time after time they wanted to put free on. Um, no, Frog. It was Stella Blade. The reason it because Microsoft. Stella oh. Blade. Here we go. Shift Up CEO and Stella Blade Sorry. director Kim Hun Yung Tae said, "Quote: I felt that I wanted to release a high quality game on a single platform, and so when it came to deciding on which platform, I determined PlayStation Five would deliver the most optimal gameplay experience." Oh, ouch. Quote, I loved video games even before the emergence of PlayStation, but I don't have that much money at that time. I didn't have that much money at that time. I was only, it was only when PlayStation launched that I really started playing games. So PlayStation played a large part in shaping my personal values about games. But he said, quote, I determined PlayStation 5 would deliver the most optimal gameplay experience. Interesting. And that's the benefit of working on high quality on a single platform. They want to make multi-plats and deal with all that stuff because it is work to put it on multiple platform games. We had Todd Howard on the show pointing at at vending machines, but also telling you that it was better when they pulled it off a PlayStation to stay focused. Focused development on a single platform ecosystem now that was horseshit because he's developing for pc and developing of a console but he it was better to stay focused on a limited number of platforms wow focus development and you get devs to say the same thing focused development on a single platform they're not worried about chumming the water for the masses they're worried about making one quality game on what they could what they what they could build confidently on to ensure the quality exists not spreading themselves thin not pulling a call of duty we're going to put it everywhere switch and all this other stuff and compromise game not put it on an Xbox game that we can't ship co-op multiplayer because we made PC versions of Halo Infinite and it's free so sorry we, we co-op's coming later because we have to figure out how to work on all these configurations no Let's do focus development and exclusivity. And I'm sure Sony is funding it. Sony's paying for it, just like Microsoft paid for Rise of the Tomb Raider. If they said without them, it would never existed. Focus development on exclusives. So just saying exclusive because it's a marketing term, but there's also development benefits as well as being exclusive. And we said that. It, it, Todd Howard said it. Your own Xbox developer said it, where he said that, you know, we develop and having our the internal people come and help build the game as well. So optimization, single platform. So exclusivity is not just a marketing beat. It's also a developmental benefit to ensure quality on a single platform on a on hardware that is not changing all over the place. Shout out to Zubies for that one. But then on top of that, and, and you know, maybe, maybe we do need, need a little reminder, so let's go back. I just want to kind of wrap that into this. Here, where is that one? That was from, that one from last week. Where's that one with Mr. Mr. Howard? Just to kind of, if you missed that that one, Right here, Mr. Todd. There he is right here. And I didn't see Dusty Bin having a problem with this one. I think PlayStation... This is Mr. Todd Howard. There he is, Mr. Todd Howard. You know, one of your own. I think PlayStation 5 is just an insane machine. They've done a great job, and we've had great success on PlayStation, said Lex Freeman on the Lex Freeman podcast. Todd Howard continues to go... From a development side, you know, <clears throat> I like the ability to focus. 
So our ability to focus and say and have help from them, the top engineers at Xbox, to say we're going to make this look incredible on a new system, from my standpoint, is just awesome. So there's your Todd Howard talking about focused development after it was pulled and stopping the PS5. Todd loves the PS5. And you know what? While we're talking about the industry, um, you know, people just hating on, you know, I don't know why. If you're gamers, like, you should be excited about what, what Sony and Nintendo have been doing. I don't know why people don't like that. But look, look, why don't you look at, look at this? Look who else is talking about some hell divers. I forgot to put this up. Look, look, look at this. Ain't this some shock? I think I can find it. Oh, and the Gravity Rush 2 thing is coming to PC and PlayStation. They shut those down. But wait a second. Wait a second. Look who's loving this. Do, 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 do. Where are I? Oh, looky, looky here. How are these apples? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Here it comes. I tell you, what, whatever can go wrong will go wrong for Microsoft. This stuff, listen, I'm not creating this. But how ironic is that Joseph Staten, the creator of Halo, the one who left 343, is saying, I'm going to spend way too much money when and if Helldivers 2 starts selling ships in their shop. Ah, it's insane. Who? The creator of Halo. This brings a full circle, Grinders. And what did he name his ship? I named my ship the Halo of Judgment. He said he he named his the Core of Midnight. And then here's your beggars, Fotus. If they bring it to Xbox, I will spend money too. Oh, get out of here. Take a walk. And then here, look. This game brings back feelings that had locked away since 2007. I named my, my Prophet of Truth. Don't give them ideas. The pillar of autumn. How do you like this? It's calm. Dude, it, how? Like I said, whatever can go wrong will go wrong for Microsoft. This is what happened. You have Joseph Staten hyping up hell divers that he's going to spend money. Dude. And then we got confirmation. Xbox is going to stream... A new show on March 6th, a partner show. Streaming new games. 30 minutes from partner preview has new stuff from Capcom and EA. They're going to show a partner preview. Capcom's Kunsigami, Path of Godness, action strategy game. And the first Berserker. And Dungeon Fighter Online from the Dungeon Fighter Online team. So partner update. Um... You know, and I, I thought Xbox guys, they'll be a little upset thinking that Nintendo will be there to offer their games on Xbox, right? No. Because Nintendo opened their show, their partner show with Xbox putting their games on a Switch. Um, will Nintendo be there? I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you. <laughs> we something. don't care. Jeremy. Nintendo won't be there. Let's see their BT their, their their games. Oh, yo, yeah, yeah, I forgot that. I forgot that. Yo, they the, go back to Dusty Bin. We got to go to Dusty Bin. Where's Dusty Bin? Where is he? I got him over here. Where is he? Where's Dusty Bin? Where is he? Is this the one way he says you can have our BTS? Is so this, this helped him out a bit. Have oh, to no. worry about one. There was the other clip of it. Is this the one? Keep it up. Very few in the community with a voice of reason. Thank you, Xana. Oh, here it is. This one. 
chat here. Love what you're doing, Destin. Keep it up. Very few in the community with a voice of reason. Thank you, Xanar. The <laughs> Xbox community Get is help. in shambles right now, and it's a dang shame. That's all I got to say. That's what it took. A couple of B-tier games going over to PlayStation for y'all to crumble. For y'all to start saying we're going to lose all our games and Xbox is dead. Like, I can't believe it. I can't believe that all the diehards just left. It was... <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Anyway, let's continue on. Got a super chat here. Love what you're doing, Destin. Keep it up. Very few in the community with a voice of reason. Thank you, Xanark. The Xbox community is in shambles right now, and it's a dang shame. That's all I got to say. That's what it took. A couple of B-tier games going over to PlayStation for y'all to crumble. For y'all to start saying we're going to lose all our games and Xbox is dead. Like, I can't believe it. I can't believe that all the diehards just left. It was... <laughs> I Voice of reason. Yeah, I got I got somebody for that voice of reason. Um listen. Um I got some I got something uh for you. Oh no! We suck again! There's no vo <laughs> voice of reason. He is in the same in the same chat that he's saying he's the voice of reason. He calls those games B tier games. Listen <laughs> Stop! Enough! <laughs> Stop! Oh, Enough! Oh my god, B-tier games. My little baby little Fisher Price oh plastic god. toy! B-tier games. Oh my goodness. The Claymore's with the... F Holy crap. The Claymore's with the five. He goes, it would be hilarious if this SpongeBob console ended up being the last Xbox hardware. Yo, that is some spooky, spooky shit, Claymore's. That is some spooky... Spooky shit. You want to know what? The last Xbox. Wait a second. The Xbox. If you remember. The... <laughs> no. Dude. The last Xbox One X. No way. Wait a second. If you remember, do you remember what the last Xbox One X was? Do you remember? Oh no, where is it? It said it on the box. It said it on the box. It they told you on the box what the future was. Oh no, where is it? Do you remember which one it was? Come on, say, hey, where's the picture? Show me the picture of that that one. Yo, this is spooky. That's a spooky super chat, man. That is Spook City. It was printed on your uh you don't remember Clay was? Yeah. Wait. I'm getting it for you. I gotta get the image. Dude, here it is. Oh, come on. Is this it? There it is. Dude. The last... Oh, come on. Come on, dude. Let me zoom in on it. Here it is. The last... Are you kidding me? There it is. The last Series X hardware that came out. The Cyberpunk one, and it had on it no future. Oh, man. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Holy spirit, activate. Oh, no. It was the oh, cyberpunk yeah. one, dude. I told it writes activate. itself. Activate. Activate. It was the cyberpunk series, the one X. It said no future on the box. No future. I had to find it. I had to find it. The no future series, the no future one X. <laughs> I told you, man, this stuff. Would you ship that? <laughs> what you just played? Build a great 
uh, Project Scarlet. I want people to feel like they've ha they can have amazing console experiences they've never seen before, mm -hmm. um, and that they've got the best lineup of content and services <laughs> of any platform out there. And we're totally focused on that. And I know we have other things going with like coming to PC and xCloud, um, but I'll say that you know, being a leader in console is something that uh, the team is committed to, to doing. And, and that's the, we're not building this, this program to, to try to aim for second place. We were going right. to build it aiming for aim first last. place. And, oh, damn. Um, and that's, that's what I want to hit. Mm -hmm. One of the other things. It there it is. That was the last series. That was the last One X controller. CD Projekt Red bundle. No future. <laughs> there it is. Hit the nail on the head. Man, Clay was. That's crazy. That is a wild, wild, wild. <laughs> I tell you, it writes it. I tell you, hey, man. And then the one that Frog was alluding to earlier. Well, he called those B tier games. So they're just B tier games, he said. So, so he's saying high fry rush. Oh man, do it. Wait a second. Is it just? Oh no, no, no! Don't tell Mr. me. Chief, don't, don't, don't make it this easy. Do not make it this easy, Grinders. Hit that freaking like button. Only getting up. Do not make it this easy. I want to hear Dustin talk about the B tier Hi-Fi Rush. Not in that uncanny valley realm. The video, I believe, was. Is this it? Do you talk about, is this the one? For games and it totally worked. Like it's, you, you'd you never, I felt just, there's all kinds of, do it for. I understand morning after it had come out and on the X. Baldur's Gate three is definitely my choice. I, I think it's, I understand Khalif liking Alan Wake two and the technical achievement that Alan Wake two accomplished is also Impressive. Lucky to, I got a copy R plus in there. Tail breaking. And also, I guess, and allowing them oh, man, to, I hope not. to learn the mechanics of racing. And oh, we were talking about no BTA actually, games, dude. I was like, don't make it that. Don't make it that. He maybe. <laughs> no, what is this? Please. B tier games said it himself. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Best games of the year to talk about. Oh no, what is this? <laughs> what is wait a second? No, wait a second. What the hell is this now? Is this why is this on wait a second? Hi-Fi Rush must be celebrated. I tell ya. Yeah, they were... Comp oh, my God. Dude, they were comparing... Hi-Fi Rush was like their, their counter to Forspoken. So ridiculous. Remember that frog? Oh, I remember it. They would, they would, they would use Hi Fi Rush. It was like it's selling more than Forspoken, all this other stuff. Like, I like, remember it. It was used, it was so we weaponized. Know that, and we know that game. And we know that game did not um, sell well. Did I get the PS4, uh, PS5 version? Of course. Uh, only two games I'm getting is it coming to PlayStation from Xbox. Uh, it's Hi Fi Rush, and I got a friend who's a diehard CFDs so fan, and I promised him if it ever can, because I told him it was coming to PlayStation way before they announced it, and he told me I was lying. And he said, if it comes to PlayStation, he's going to sell his Xbox. Uh, and he said, but I have to get it. So mm -hmm. I'm going to get it. Let's see if I can Just find him. Just for him. Yeah. So. That this came so definitely, I'm definitely gonna be playing C D S. I'm definitely gonna be playing High Fire Rush. Pentiment is a joke. I don't want that, uh, no, no, no. and I don't want. I don't want to play Grounded. They all said Game I'm of not the Year. In Grounded. That's right. Yeah, boy. They all yeah. said Game of the Year. Yeah, this is High Fire Rush. Must be celebrated, Frog. Like this is what uh here it is. 
to create this I'll and I'll put it out Just there. The, one. the way that the team nice. who worked Sit. on Pentiment Obsidian got to make Sit their down. sort of passion project. I, I love seeing these these sort of things come out of nowhere. It's great. Yeah, we're going to come dogs, back to so. that because that's, you bring up a good point. But but first, I want to yeah. go to Miranda with, with her impressions of this game. Yeah, we'll go to the... 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 Um game pass because the way you could oh have beta testing and no, your, I, your and no i take game the pass out. and we had so instant and access to it and it was a mess. look who else they got on this one they got us the old out, chair it's fantastic and you know here we are of course um but i think mr influencer himself that's what she's playing himself. It. you will the see the more the dangers on influencers because of a service like game pass where it's not traditional in in the you know the Bad wording, but traditional game, gaming. Bad for speed speed I'm listening really to it. Hold up. In that, to hey, oh, I'm sorry. There's yeah, I'm a sorry. studio or development team that has this great idea, that has this passion project. Maybe Xbox is going to be more receptive to allowing them to try it out because they can put this in Game Pass and it, let the game speak for itself. I, I think them shadow dropping this, that was kind of the best message of all. Hi-Fi Rush was able to speak for itself. It didn't need this giant marketing campaign. It didn't yeah. need, you know, all this social media talk. It was like, the game's here. We're dropping it now. Go try it for yourself. People tried it, loved it. To your point, it's on Steam Deck. You can buy it on Steam. I guess it's topping the Steam charts right now. So it goes to show, even without Game Pass, people were very receptive to this game and were more than willing to spend the $30 to play it. Destin. Before we get to him, I don't hear any things about how PlayStation and Switch can't play this game. Did anybody? Did anybody catch that? Anybody? Anybody in the chat? Hit the like button before you answer. Did anybody? Then where's the outrage, Matty Beast? I didn't hear anything about hey, he's uh, getting a Steam Deck uh, on Game Pass. Did he say anything about the you can't play this on PlayStation or this will be a great game for the Switch? Did he say that? Because when he was reviewing. Final Fantasy, he goes, it is ridiculous that Xbox doesn't have this game. He did a whole podcast about how it's not fair that Xbox doesn't have Final Fantasy. I don't hear the words fair on this at all. Did you hear anything in his in his summary of Hi-Fi Rush? Did he say it's unfortunate that PlayStation and Nintendo uh, players cannot play this game? Did I, 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 I may have missed it. Let's see if Dustin emphasizes about the exclusivity and says, you know, this will be great to be put on PlayStation and Switch. Let's hear, because that's what we're hearing now. Let's hear now. Uh, game Pass's impact on this video game. Yeah, well, I've just been really happy to see games like Pentiment, who I can't play that wouldn't one. have existed without Game Pass, or games like Tunic that were partially funded by Game Pass uh, uh, backing it. This was, like Paris said, I also heard that this was in development for a, a long time and it finally came out. But I do think the fact that it was on Game Pass and that it was marketed by Xbox helped it quite a great deal. The fact that it was at the developer direct and revealed that day and then it turned out to be great definitely didn't hurt it. So the fact that it is getting that marketing push from Microsoft and the fact that it is available on Game Pass, it means more people are playing it, more people are talking about it. And I think that has a positive impact on any game that is spotlighted like that. Look at As Dust Falls last year. Yep. If As Dust Falls Ooh, another came out exclusive. without the backing of being on a service like Game Pass or the marketing from Microsoft, I don't think most people would have experienced that game. Exactly. Game Pass, but it's, game it's game definitely game. helping expand awareness of these properties. And I hope that they continue investing in passion projects like Pentiment and Tunic. And we see more games like that become a reality because of what Microsoft is choosing to do with our subscription dollars, basically. Yeah, I for me, I think the, the Game Pass piece of it is that I don't think they could have shadow dropped it without Game Pass. Right. Right. There's no way. There's no way you could have just completely foregone the marketing campaign and just Game Pass is not playable on PlayStation without, and Switch. Like, without that, as where's Paris the outrage? Free way to just instantly. And why are we talking about a B tier game for eighty six minutes? It going viral, and that's that's been. I'll tell you what a <laughs> on the as Xbox fans, we have been waiting for Something. a moment like this where everybody's celebrating a big new Xbox exclusive. Everybody, whoa, whoa, I mean, whoa, 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 no whoa, disrespect whoa, to whoa, Pentiment. Whoa, 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 everybody's celebrating it. 
See what I mean? Do you see what I mean? When it's Xbox and Game Pass, it's everybody. But when it's on Switch or on a on a PlayStation, even when it's on a PlayStation and a PC, it's not fair. Put it on Xbox. Oh, I love how it's the celebration. Oh, it, it's a cell. Everybody's celebrating it. Everybody. I don't hear one person go, but wait a second. They can't play this on a Switch. They can't play this on PlayStation. Do you hear that outrage? I don't hear any of it. IGN gave it a 10. It got huge scores everywhere, but. But it's a B tier game. It's just a B tier game. What are you talking about? The reality is Pentiment did not go viral the way this game has. And I know that's, that's, it's not Pentiment's fault. It just, you know, whether it was because it came out in November along, you know, near some other bigger titles or what, but, but it's just been so like, I cannot remember the last time that a major Xbox release dominated the conversation for, you know, a week or more at a time which has happened with this game. Wow, this is amazing. Because we just had this with Helldivers 2 being taken over, selling more ye month, week over week. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth reviewing in the 92 Metacritic, 93 Metacritic. Everybody loves that game. Game is incredible. But all I hear is how exclusives are not good. Put this on Xbox. But when I hear about the B-tier Hi-Fi Rush game, it's a universal celebration. Everybody's loving it. This is incredible. We haven't celebrated it. Everybody's talking about it. But when everybody's talking about Hellblade 2, it's about, oh no, why is it not on Xbox? When everybody's talking about Final Fantasy Rebirth, it's like, oh no, it's not fair. It's not on Xbox. What? Really? Oh, so there's no universal celebration. It only is that. Let, let's hear more of this clown show. Circus is in uh, town. Forza, maybe. Forza Horizon 5 probably yeah, was the last that's, one. That's, you're probably right. Yeah. Um, Where's the circus music? Yeah, I mean, even, oh, I guess, no, I know, want to hear them roaring on cuts the right now. It got mostly great scores as well. But, but yeah, uh, that, that's, that's a good, good callback, Destin, for sure. Um, yeah, and it was incredible to me, too. The... The project director, hold on, as I have his name right here, uh, John Johannes, he had tweeted out a picture uh, on the day of announcement and release of the entire team in a conference room that worked, or mo he said mo the team, on marketing in any way, shape, or form whatsoever, zero, other than what it cost to put together that developer direct and go out to Tango and shoot the interviews uh, the day. Sony then pivoted again from here for content now we got hi-fi rush we obviously we obviously we just we're about to wait wait did you say we the, got oh the, the greater contextual picture uh that this game fits into and destin you had hit on it and that is this get this awesome sh shadow drop of a video game first party exclusive could not have come at a more desperately needed time for microsoft uh the the narrative has had you know we 2021 we thought sunny days are here again we've got psychonauts 2 we've got forza horizon 5 we've got halo infinite i can't believe we're, how they're uh, celebrating by, and then the b tier game year and it's just crickets uh our own this is the, the best Kat time Haley ever an exclusive a interview with Phil spencer last week who admitted yep we were we were light on games last year and that's Phil spencer had to admit that you know, they're light on responsibility games. for it and we've been expecting big things and just we, we need big things from Microsoft this year as people that have invested in this ecosystem. And Paris, like we knew we were going to get Let's see Paris to shoot him for, down about exclusives uh, a bed, right? Uh, we I thought Paris, all, uh, all please, he said the word exclusive. We only got release dates for three, but it really could not have gone better. Paris, for, make sure for, you tell them exclusives are not good, to right? Get three release dates with. And then a fourth, but with one of them being... I hope Paris and Dustin jump in here and go, uh, uh, exclusives are anti-consumer, Ryan. 
today, right now, immediately go play this and and have that game. I mean, it, it, that that the context here is is just part, it's a big part of the story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I I think that was it. Took the sting out of not getting a release date for Forza, in the sense that boom, we got something to play immediately yeah. following that event. And to your point, twenty twenty two was, for lack of a better term, very light for Xbox. So they needed to basically come out the gate swinging with content. This has to be a year where, <clears throat> excuse me, where they get consistent with content with games coming out and at least it looks like here for this first half of the year <clears throat> excuse me again i'm getting over cold but um we're going to have a more consistent cadence first half of the year for content now we got hi-fi rush we obviously we just we're about we just got age of empires 2 on console we know we're getting minecraft we know we're getting redfall i mean we'll obviously see with with starfield but we're now we're starting to see games come out of Xbox Game Studios, and I think that's very important for them. And the most important part out of all of that, sure, release dates are great, putting games out are great, but the game's got to be good. And Hi-Fi Rush is good, and and that's the most important thing. People can be excited to play this game and look forward to the next batch of games coming out if they can hold this bar quality as they continue. Yeah, well said. Because because you know we've <laughs> then we know what happened the, with Redfall. The number, the quality and the quantity of exclusives for Microsoft over the past generation plus has been a problem. Isn't I mean, it amazing knowing the, the that Redfall is going to come up on these guys right the, soon? Uh, not, very few of them have been. <laughs> it is almost like you want to jump back. That, that Hi-Fi Rush is. I it's mean, almost you want to jump on that show a year ago and just be like, guys, guys. Oh, no. We suck again. You don't know what's coming. Don't get to your hopes up on this B-tier game because Redfall is coming swiftly right up that ace. <laughs> You know, Recore came along and was... Oh, Jesus. Okay. Uh, get that release cadence going. Oh, They've the release cadence. Oh. A few of the titles that are coming, but we still need dates for Starfield. All about exclusives, though, right? Like, I want to know when I'm playing those games. Mm. And uh, hopefully this kickoff with Hi-Fi Rush and then Minecraft and Redfall. Oh, Minecraft, by the way. Oh, the Mi the Minecraft... Uh, uh, the Minecraft... Uh, what was it? Minecraft Legends, they're hyping up. Mm-hmm. And Redfall. Sort of sets a good cadence for the rest of the year. Yeah, Miranda. Uh, Not new IPs, but they're a big risk, so they're... Uh, rather, developers have spent the last year working on Unreal Engine prototypes. Even going to be able to support things like... Thing ...and refocus, because it feels like this is like the third time that they're doing that. You do it. You have to do it. ...that we spoke about and how that's just not... That's just... Well... The clown show's leaving town. The hell I owe this. I think we heard enough. I think we heard enough. A easy search. It is not hard. You just search. Hi-Fi Rush. It was a B-tier game. They talked about it for 80 minutes. And it was the start of all the incredible games to come out. Including Redfall. Redfall game of the got generation. A, lot of, a lot of hate. It's not a bad game. It's, you know, a double A game at best. You, I would look at it like at a, a seven, maybe, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, man. This shit is hilarious. Like, how? Like, do they, do they, like, don't know what they say? Like, I don't get it, dude. I, I don't understand. Do not understand it. But, the flip-flopping, exclusives. Uh, I didn't hear one person on that show in the, the, the 15 minutes of that whole thing talk about how, oh, well, this is not really fair to Sony and, and Nintendo not getting some of these games. Nobody said anything about the word exclusives. They weren't like Sony. They, nobody, and know what's hilarious? Nobody ever said Microsoft needs to put their games on PlayStation. You know what? Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? All these insiders, what, 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 what I was told, what I heard was, what they told me was, what Phil signed me was, what all this sign this was, all, all this, this stuff. Now, one person said, hey, guys, they're thinking about putting their games on, on other platforms because they need to. Nobody said anything. 
Nobody said anything. It was all, this is a great cadence of releases, of exclusives. It was all about exclusives. Nobody said, what about PlayStation on that show? Nobody said, what about Nintendo on that show? Nobody said, Hi-Fi Rush would have been great on Nintendo. Nobody said any of that stuff. And everybody was talking about Activision games. This is a great cadence and quality. They talked a lot about it, but now it's just a B-tier game because it's going over the PlayStation. Really? <laughs> really? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, nobody's saying any of that stuff. But when there's incredible games coming out from PlayStation... And not even Switch, but when incredible games are coming out from PlayStation, like Helldivers and Final Fantasy, and the, uh, exclusives are bad. Oh no, oh no. That can't be done. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But grind this. I'm going to go download wrestling. I might stream it tonight at midnight. Yeah, exclusives are bad now. No, they're not. Exclusives always mattered. I always said they mattered. So hit that like button. We had about 400 people, over 400 people in here. Hit that like button. Just another message. Thank you so much for the super chats, all the gifted VIPs. And there's a brand new tier for the ultimate grinder where you'll get access to the brand new songs that come from the gaming grindhouse records. You've heard a couple of them. I put them on the show earlier. They're also on the videos but I'll be putting them in an unreleased playlist as I make new ones coming uh, in the future. And as an as a, um, a ultimate grinder, you'll be able to listen to those. And uh, just for everybody staying to the end of this show, I'm going to let you listen to a new one that I have here. And uh, and we'll we'll head out with this one. It's a softer tone and not a very ramped up one. It's a little, little um, romantic version of a Phil Ness. But um, uh, I wrote this one. So you'll hear this one as it goes out, but this is just a sampling of what you'll get as a grind, and you'll be able to vote. So it's not that you guys are not going to be able to hear it, but I want the, the ultimate grind is that, that membership tier to be able to help grow the channel and help change, add content to the channel that they think that, you know, help you make the channel what you want it to be. So with that, whatever your name is, Get ready for the Welcome, big Gabriel. Join the game rounds. Yes, and thank you. Gabriel just demonstrated. Please hit that subscribe button. We're on our way to 3,000 subscribers. But I'm going to play this other tune for you, for you grinders that hung in there. And there's so much more. I have so many ideas, so many things, and I want to share it with you. And Ultimate Grinders, I want you guys to give me the input, and you will vote as an Ultimate, ultimate Grinder on which ones will get released to the VIPs and to all the gaming grinding house. Nation. So with that, we will play another song from the Gaming Grindhouse Records. Another song just as a preview. And uh, if you want to listen to all of them as they make them, then please join to the Ultimate Grinders. And here it is, Grinders. Hopefully this one comes through. Yep, here it is. It's called The Game of Illusions. Thank you again, Grinders. Hit that like button and share it out. And we'll leave you here with the Phil Ness Games of Illusions. In the land of make believe where dreams collide. There's a man with a vision oh, yeah. selling stories deep inside. Promising the world with every game he creates. But beneath the surface is lies away. Yeah. He's got a groove that's hard to resist. Then 
this is the master, he tops the list, oh yeah, he'll take you to a rooftop party all night, signing your lower back, it's out of sight. Thank you again, Grinders. If you want, do you want an encore? I just, it makes me feel so good. I feel so good. It's such a, such a dramatic song. I took inspiration from Air Supply and my favorite Chicago in that song. Should we do an encore, Grinders? You want to do one more? I think we do one more time. I, 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 let me know. Hit that like button. You want an encore of that song? Because I, 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 maybe you missed some lines. Everybody wave your hands. <laughs> you know what? We got over 300. Let's do it one more. One more time. Game of Illusions. The Phil Ness tune. Encore. Encore. Wait, wait, where's my where's my thing? Encore, please. Encore. Wait, wait, I didn't give myself any applause. I didn't give any any applause for this one. We need an encore. Encore. The tool man! He upgraded to ultimate. We got the tool. The tool. Yo, if the tool man is in the in there, I, I yo. Tool man's in the house. For the Tool Man Encore Edition Ultimate Grinder. Get ready. Hit me with the horns. The Game of Illusions. Sing it. The land of make believe where it's dreams collide. Beautiful. There's a man with a vision selling stories deep inside. From a single world with every game he creates. But beneath the surface is lies away. Oh, yeah, feel this. Ooh, yeah, feel this. Now we see, see through the, the lies. The veil is lifting high. No more falling prey to, to the, the game. It's hard to resist. Fitness is the master. He tops the list. Oh yeah. He'll take you to a rooftop party rooftop. all night. Signing your lower back. It's out of sight. Come on. Fitness. Party life. And thank you again, Ultimate Grinders and VIPs and Super Chats. Hit that like button. There's your music and party like a Phil Ness. And we're going to do one more. We'll do a booty bounce. Booty bounce. But no. Oh, oh. Who cares I am? Phil Spencer. And I am winning awards, bitch. Oh, man. He is. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again. Hit that like button. Share it out. Stay subscribed to the Gaming Grand House. It's all coming your way, baby. Hey, yeah.